up? What's up? What's up, court nerds? It's time to get served. Let's have a little fun with our boy, Judge Dad. I hope you all enjoy. Oh, hope you all enjoy the show. I got some fun today. I have clips out the wazoo. How we doing, everybody in the chat? Let's have some fun tonight. Judge Dad is just incredible every single day, day in and day out. Let's roll. <laughs> and dad assume the dad position in five four three two he's about to take a nap and come on do it do it you know we're waiting for it Anybody see the mug? Oh, <laughs> there it is. That's me every Sunday night with my daughter jumping all over me. There it is. <laughs> come on, come on. That is gold. That is absolute gold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's the only judge that says nothing and we're entertained. <laughs> he says absolutely nothing. Oh, good morning, Judge. How are you? Let's go, White. Jennifer White. <laughs> Jennifer Lynn White, 22B142857. <laughs> good morning, Your Honor. It's Michael Crawford, representing Mrs. White. Mrs. White, I apologize. Your name, ma'am? Jennifer Lynn White. an attitude. What are we doing on this? Your Honor, we really appreciate your patience and understanding. Uh, my client, uh, again, upon full reconsideration and going through every aspect of this process as best I could explain it to her, I think she now has a clear understanding of her rights, what her offer was, what she pled to. And I think she still would like to move forward and ask the court to accept this recommendation and is ready to answer any questions the judge might need to ask. Did you come. did you know the property was stolen when you took possession of it? Yes, sir. Why'd you tell me? Why are we doing this? I wait a minute. It's like a wait, wait. Turn around. Don't talk to your friends now. I'm you want to talk to your looking at the time. Sorry. What's wrong with the time? I was just seeing what time it was. I'm, I'm, you're taking this that seriously. All of a sudden, you're worried about the time. My apologies, Your Honor. Is what? Yes, sir. We happen to think this is serious. It is serious. I'm just telling you, lawyers, judges, we think this is serious business going on in here. You got a good lawyer. Mm -hmm. I know how I take pleas. Two times now, at least, you bounce back and forth. Maybe three. And I want to make sure I understand. Because I don't really have this much difficulty typically comprehending what somebody is telling me. I understand Don't that. interrupt me. And. You told me twice you didn't know the property was stolen at the time you had to, that you took possession of it. You told me that at least twice, probably closer to four times. If I go back and listen to the first two times you were in front of me today. I'm not always clear. I'm not, I'm not always 100% clear. If I was 100% clear 100% of the time, 0% of the time would somebody ask me to explain. So I will bear the responsibility for that. Now, I don't want anybody to ever come into this building 
ever and plead guilty to something they didn't do. It's too important. It's too important. It's way too important. So I'm going to ask you again. I'm going to make sure I'm making myself clear. This was perfume, correct? Correct. At some point, you came into possession in the in the sense that this perfume was given to you by somebody and put in your hand. True or false? True. If the time that somebody gave you this perfume and put it in your hand, at which point you would be in possession of it. Actually, it was within your immediate control, but we don't need to go there. At the time somebody put the perfume in your hand, did you know that that property had been stolen from somebody else? Yes, Your Honor. Then why did you tell me four times that you didn't? I was, I'm sorry, it was a misunderstanding. No, it wasn't a misunderstanding. I'm nervous. I don't... And it wasn't a misunderstanding. So now I have to go on and talk to you some more because I need you to understand that this is just how judges think. I'm not going to speak for everybody. I'm going to speak for how I think. Okay. When I ask somebody a question, and I would never ask anybody a question unless legally allowed to do so, I don't ever ask anybody ever in 28 years and two months, if I three months, if I ever asked anybody anything that would cause them to incriminate themselves before there has been a conviction. That is either an adjudication of a jury finding somebody guilty, a judge adjudication finding somebody guilty, or a judge, and I'm talking about myself, accepting the guilty plea from the defendant. At no time have I ever done that. Do you understand what I'm saying? I understand. All right. Now, how do I put this? I don't appreciate you being dancing around here with me. This was not a misunderstanding. This is what I call cold feet. It reminds me of the husband or bride that's going to the altar and decides that they don't want to go to the altar. So you pled guilty. I don't take guilty pleas unless somebody enunciates facts out of their lips or unless it qualifies for a no contest plea and facts contained in the police report would lead any reasonable person to conclude that the elements of the crime that the defendant is pleading to have been set forth adequately in the report. So when people don't tell me the truth, I don't appreciate it because we're not in a bar. Right. I know people like to tell fish stories. That's fine. Go do it in a bar. This is in a bar. Dadding it. We're in a courtroom. There's nothing, nothing more sacred to our democracy than courtrooms throughout this country. Nothing. I nothing. understand that. And I don't lie to me and don't interrupt me. You're not accepting responsibility for what you did. And that bothers me. You know why that bothers me? Because when people don't accept responsibility for what they did, the overwhelming majority of those are not going to comply with probation. And if they don't comply with probation, guess what has to happen often? Nothing I want to do, and certainly nothing that the defendant wants to do. So I'm going to ask you one more time true or false when you received the perfume you knew the perfume was stolen sure. well i'm glad we wasted all this time i don't care about my time i do care about your time mr crawford and i do care about the other people in here that have had to wait through this little charade Turn around here, Ms. White. Don't start looking at your friends. I'm not. Well, why are, you, why are you looking from the side here? Don't be turning your body to the side here. You look at me. This is where your attention should be directed right now. 
Is there anything else that anybody wants to say? No, Your Honor. Anything that you want to say, Ms. White? I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. I don't want to be disrespectful to your court. That was never my intention. I would never do that. I take responsibility for what I did. And that's why I'm pleading guilty to concealing stolen property. And I will take probation very serious and get it done and over with and completed. Good. Then we won't have a problem. 12 months probation terms of probation. You cannot leave the state without the consent of the court or violate any law or ordinance. If you change your address, your place from the corner, your home telephone number, you must notify probation. You have to report as directed. Restitution, if any, will be handled through civil litigation. Court will note that the victim was notified of the date and time. It was to be here at 930 to make a statement if they wanted restitution, did not respond, and did not appear. Therefore, again, restitution uh, will be... Uh, determined by, if anything, civil litigation. You're not to enter the property address at 24345 Helene. You're not to go back to there in Brownstown, not to go back to there. You're not to have any contact with the victim, Ashley Turner. Uh, write phone, see text, email, or communicate with her in any way. I'm not sure where the alcohol provisions are coming in. That's why I was, I was confused myself, Your Honor. Okay. Well, I'm not going to order it because I don't order it unless it had something to do with this theft defense, and it did not. And I do see Hang a psychiatrist on. every month, so I'm under a doctor's supervision. Okay. So I'm not sure why you brought that up. Do you because want the probation office was talking about it was the alcohol or drug crime, and it's neither. I'm not ordering that. I just told you that. I'm not ordering you to abstain from the use of alcohol or drugs. I'm going to hope you don't use drugs, especially illegal ones. Absolutely not. I want you to attend the Positive Strategies program. I hope you do. With eight week follow up. And I do want you to, uh, you know, you're starting to accumulate some issues here. Uh, I'm going to order that you attend three days on the court work program. There's a $35 a day charge for that for a total of $105. That's in lieu of jail. I'm also going to order that you pay fines. Of, I'll go kind of light on this, uh, but there's because there's mandatory fees. 50 fines, 50 costs, 75 victims rights, $50 justice assessment, two and a quarter, screening fees, 60 for 285. Probation fees are 240 for 525. 630 is your total with the court work program fees, expensive bottle of perfume. I understand. I but but this is what happens when you keep committing crimes. You got you got to stay, stay out of trouble. I mean, you seem like a nice person. I don't know why you're doing this. Uh, you have 21 days to appeal, 14 days to apply for a court appointed lawyer. Would you like to? Can you pay all of this today? No, I cannot. How much can you pay? I'm today? unemployed. Why aren't you working? Um, I currently just trying Start to get back on my tomorrow, two feet Grim. from the time this happened last year until now i just got a house i'm trying to get settled in there who do you live with now i live with my brother but i just got a house for myself me and my son and i'm planning on going back to work that's the other thing you're to obtain and maintain employment and provide proof i'm gonna let you pay this at the rate of 30 dollars a week i'm gonna start this Sometimes this is the bizarro world. Usually you need a job to get a house. I mean, I'm sure she's renting it, probably Section 8, but, like, I, I can't. She's starting a job tomorrow. Grimm's Chocolate Bar is starting a job tomorrow. Beginning on May the 12th. Can I pay before then if I have... Uh... Nobody's going to stop you. But you have to pay at least 30 a week starting May the 12th. If you don't have the money, you come in here on or before the due date. Ms. White, I, I want to tell you real quick, I don't want to belabor this. These people have been waiting long enough to hear this case. You seem like a nice person, but you're getting yourself in trouble. You don't have a diploma. You don't have a job. I have a Wait, date. please don't interrupt me. Okay, I'm sorry. You don't have a job. You don't have a diploma. And you, you got to stay. You got you to gotta move forward with your life here. And I really want to see you do that for you, not for me. That's all I'm going to say. 
Probation will go over the order with you. Again, if you don't have the money, you call the court. We'll go on Zoom. Thank you very much. Madison Evans. 22B14206822W829692. Ms. Evans, come on up here. This one's a Ms. O'Donnell, too. your name. Just hold on for probation, Your Honor. Mr. Crawford, your appearance. Good morning, Your Honor. Michael Crawford, representing Ms. Evans. Ms. Sorry. Evans, your name. Madison Evans. I set this for sentence. I arraigned her. It looks like she pled guilty on 22B142068. That's the resist and obstruct. She pled guilty to six different probation violation counts. So the first thing I have to decide is whether or not the status is going to be revoked and what the, and what the sentence would be on that case if I do so, or whether I'm going to continue probation and add additional terms. And then on the other file, 22W829692, she pled guilty to all three counts, fair to attend her scheduled visit, fair to attend anger management, fair to pay fines and costs. She's here for scheduling on all those. Your name? Just about on for probation, Your Honor. I told her when she left here. I'm going to put, and I really hope, hope that she, uh, you know, and by the way, I want you to know, young lady, I gave you a break by taking this, this one under 771.1. I gave you a break. I, there was a reason, I think you had a prior of some kind that I felt like it should be disqualifying. But nonetheless, the prosecutor had asked me to and the defense wanted me to and I did that. I'm hoping she has a job. Does she have a job? I'm happy to report, Your Honor, that she will start working tomorrow at DQ's in Romulus. Tomorrow? What's DQ's? The uh, ice cream. Dairy Queen? It's DQ. DQ. It's, it's, I'm sorry. Um, like the carpets for four trucks? Even better. Well, that's great. It still doesn't get her out of hot water here, though. Well, let me tell you. She more just thumbed her nose at us left and right. I know it's upsetting, Your Honor, but I've got more good news to report. Well, my client has signed up for anger management as required. She's going to start that on April the 4th, so she's committed to getting on back on track and staying on track with that. And uh, she's ready to uh, start her payment. How old is your client? I'm sorry, 20. 20. 20. Is wow. this her, how old? Wow. 20. 20. Is this her dad? Yeah. Come on up here, will you please? And you don't have to. And, uh, dad, dad remember he was here last God, time too. He's I do here. remember. What's your name, sir? Great. I don't remember. Uh, she does not live with you, correct? She lives with my mother. Go ahead, Mr. Crawford. What else would you like to tell me? Well, yeah. The bottom line is that she's taking this seriously. She, she heard what you said last time. I think we explained before that she was going through some housing issues. She was essentially homeless for a while there, didn't have a vehicle, uh, but she's uh, found some housing with grandma. Dad is uh, doubling his efforts to be as supportive as possible. I don't think you got to worry about her staying on track and finishing up probation at this stage. Well, I think this is a bit of a wake up call for the whole family. I appreciate, appreciate your adversarial skills, but let me put this in perspective for you, Ms. Evans. You previously had a violation on the 692 case. And now, between these two cases, you have nine violations. That's 10. They throw Babe Ruth off the team if he struck out 10 times in a row. I don't know what's going on here. All I know is you're not taking me seriously at all. What do you have to say? So I was contacted by prevention education this morning for her anger management class, and she did sign up for her follow-up class. So she's only completed the intake. She's scheduled for her next follow-up on April 4th. 
Um, but she has an eight week follow up. So she has eight more sessions she has to complete. Give me first pages of registers, please. Anything else, Mr. Crawford? Your Honor, uh, again, we just really like the, the court to consider allowing her to maintain her uh, 771.1 status uh, moving forward. As stated, she's 20 years old. Perhaps she's made some uh, bad decisions, hadn't been the most responsible, perhaps a little hard headed. But if the court could uh, just maybe uh, give some additional uh, tough love here, maybe some additional uh, volunteer work or something like that. But she's young, she's got a long way to go. She doesn't need a criminal record. And uh, it's just, we're just asking for another opportunity. I just cannot, it, I can't do that. I'm sorry. I, I cannot do that. She's, she's blown this off from day one. She's done nothing. I'm entering the conviction on both of these cases, uh, <clears throat> both on the assault, I'm revoking the height of status, and I'm revoking the 771 status on the other case. Or, uh, I'm going to sentence her anew. Um, He's not having it and today. We'll go from there. But under these circumstances, I just cannot, uh, I cannot do this. She has been um, on probation for four or five months. She's done nothing. Give me another first pages of registers, will you please? And on um, the other one, the, the assault case in July. I mean, No, I'm sorry. Probation orders. I apologize. All right. Give me one second. What is he going to do? What is he she gonna paid do? any fine. He was on the money today. Come on, we have to admit. Is he ever not on the money? I still want to see him bring the big book out. The big book of dad barbecue recipes. That's definitely only on Thursdays and Fridays. I would love to see how he texts. Does he text like with big letters like my father? Like, does he have like the big letters, or 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 is he normal letters? <laughs> does he like just put like one word? Like, can you just tell me if she's paid? Like any coming money? home, where <laughs> <laughs> <Or> they're like <laughs> definitely doesn't use emojis. He definitely does not use emojis, and I would be scared to use emojis when I'm texting him. If we were if we were boys, actually. You wouldn't use emojis if you're if you're have friends with him. He doesn't hang out with people who use emojis. Tell me how much was paid. Right or wrong. He, he has a flip. <laughs> Definitely. And here we go. Ready? Boxer briefs? On the boxers car. or tidy whities? There's one answer. One answer. Maybe boxers, like on a Saturday, or when he runs out of his good tidy white fruit of looms Hanes. That's it, done. <laughs> hey babe, hey babe, did you take out my fruit of the looms, my New Balance, and the high white socks, and the shorts, the real short ones. I'm going yogging. Give me the first page of a register, please. 
Does anyone see my MP3 player? So now I have to go back and censor on the RNO, censor on the assault. I'm going for my job. Where's my discman? If I let everybody finish. I'm sorry. I think we said all that we can say this day. Yeah. Um, it's been hard for um, She has been, it does seem like she has been kind of disregarding her probation and things like that. Uh, um, she was living with her mom and her mom kind of, um, she, she has a drinking problem and that's what brought on a lot of the problem. Um, and that's what kind of caused her to get put out of her. This poor attorney between these last two defendants had no shot with, with McNally today. And the comments are unbelievable, guys. You guys are unbelievable. Yeah, I would think cassette player, Discman, no, he has the non-skip Discman. And he doesn't even care if it skips. Screw it. He doesn't care. He doesn't even, he just listens to music because that's what you have to do when you jog. He hums old army tunes in his head. You know, the mom put her out. Uh, I wasn't informed about it. And then I happened, I happened to talk with her and she was standing in her car. And um, I had her come out to my house. Um, and so we didn't have really have no room there. And so I asked my mom if she could stay over there with her. So she's been living there. She haven't had any transportation. And um, I have a lawn service, but I haven't really, it hasn't really been going on. So she, she will work with me sometimes in the winter, but we haven't had much snow. Um, and so with my work schedule, I work at Delico out here in Woodhaven. I'm a crane operator. And so with my schedule, I wasn't able to help her to get back and forth to a job or to her um, the workforce thing I think she had to do. So um, I'm not taking, it still was her responsibility to put forth initiative to find other ways to get things done. Um, I just ask that the court just give her another chance. Uh, well, I'm not going to send her to jail, but I cannot justify what she's done. There's too many violations. So the HIDA status, the 771 status are revoked. I'm going to simply fine you on the resist and obstruct. I'm going to assess fines in the amount of 250, cost 250, 75 victims rights be $50 justice assessment, 575 or 90 days. So all the other sentence, I want to be clear, Ms. O'Donnell, all the rest of the sentence is being removed on that case. On the assault, 12 months probation. So I'm placing you on probation on that. No contact with Stephanie Hale. You cannot leave the state without the consent of the court or violate any law or ordinance. If you change your address, your place of employment, or home telephone number, you must notify probation. You have to report as direct. I'm going to order, again, no contact with Stephanie Hale. You're not to possess firearms. You're not to possess dangerous weapons at all. And... Um, uh, also, uh, you're to serve four days of the court work program. So I'm increasing that. I'm going to make you do four days of that. There's a $35 a day charge for that for a total of 140. You are not to enter, not to enter 21930. You're not to enter 21930 Allen Road in Woodhaven. You're to do the anger management program with eight week follow up. Anger management program with eight week follow up. Fines 100, cost 75, 75 victims' rights, $50 justice assessment. <clears throat> Excuse me, that is $300. Probation fees are $240 for $540. Screening fee is $60 for $600. $140 in court work program fees. Your total amount is to $740. If you violate, your probation could be revoked on that. You could be incarcerated for up to 90 days. Now, I'm going to give you all the time that you need to pay this. I want you to pay it, not your dad to pay it. And that's how we're going to make it work. So, first of all, let's start on the resistant obstruct judge. 
I will let you pay this at the rate of $40 per week. And I will begin this starting May the 12th. Can you do that, you think? Yes. Yeah. If you cannot do that, all you have to do is call the court or come up here on or before the due date, 830, I'll be happy to give you an extension. On the assault charge, I'm going to let you pay 40 per week. You're telling me he has Uber? He doesn't Uber. He calls he calls Classic Taxi, the local Michigan cab company in Trenton. <laughs> There's no way he Ubers. Unless his kids do it for him. <laughs> going to start that one. Beginning. What's up, Heineken? I'll just start that. I don't know how it'll overlap, but I'm going to give you. I can run them together. It's on the top. What's that? I can run them together. I'm going to let, I'm going to let uh, my judicial clerk set up terms of payment. Okay, so between probation or or Lisa, you get you guys set that up. Um, that'll be forty a week, and I'm just going to say after fines, costs paid on two two W two two B one four two zero six eight. But just keep in mind that all money has to be paid by the end of probation, all right? Young lady, I wish you well. This could have ended a lot worse. You really could have. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. It's time to grow up. 11 violations, 10, far too many. Sir, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. I wish you well, ma'am. And you'll meet with probation. Thanks, Mr. O'Donnell. Thank you, Mr. Crawford. People again. Renee Thomas. We're gonna jump to uh, we're gonna jump to our boy Simpson. He had um, thanks to my Discord again. I was busy recording other stuff. I was working. You know, I was teaching, doing everything. Um, my loyal, my faithful in the um, in the Discord turned me on to a Karen case. Uh, she just doesn't shut up in uh in simpson's court and he actually entertains it it's 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 funny two karen's going at it here we go good old judge simpson okay all right court does call the case of wenger versus hosmer you can take your name please it would have picked you up at the table but that's okay oh that's all right all right i can lean on this <laughs> Your name? Lorena Wenger. Your name, ma'am? Gabrielle Hadwin. All right. Okay. This is a termination of tenancy action. We've had a couple of appearances in other cases um, before this. Um, your position, Ms. Hosmer, as I understand it, is that there was no lease on these premises. Is that correct? Um, no, there's a lease. She received federal money. Hold on. Hold on. I wasn't. There's a lease. Mr. Wenger, is there a lease? No. It was terminated on July 31st. What do you mean you don't know? I don't know if it was terminated or not. I have a lease. Sorry? I have a lease. It's, it was month to month for COVID. Okay. But it was month to month. Yes, it was a month. Originally, it was a year lease. Then it was month to month. Okay. So, and according to the complaint, the lease would have expired on July 31st of 2022. Well, if that's the case, then how did she get federal COVID money for rent? She got Sarah funding. If that still lease, okay. That's expired. That still could happen under the. I'm trying to find somewhere to go. You the know. COVID. Okay. So that's. I have an open what, case and then somebody just called on Sunday on me, even though I haven't had my kids in seven months, they called because of my house. So I just have, I have therapy. I have people coming to there for my. Okay. Kids. I just have a lot going on. So. No heat, no water, which today I'm going to have the water fixed. Okay. So. I'm looking for housing. 
All right. So let me ask you this. Because I don't see a defense to this case. So I Mike? Had, I, I had a lawyer. Do you remember during COVID or no? I've been in court with her for like three and a half years. Ma'am, I recall the two of you being before me. Believe me. Um, but this is the date for trial. But if we can resolve this case, then we'll try to resolve it. Otherwise, I will be trying the case. Okay. So let's just make it real clear. We'll just be blunt about this. Sure. Ms. Wenger wants you out. Yep. You, as I understand the relationship between the parties, um, I think it'd be a good thing if you were out. Yeah, I don't. She wants to get. She wants to get the house fixed. Um, you don't laugh about that. That's what she, her. Oh, I haven't had heat she, before. Here. Well, ma'am, look. I get it. No, listen to me. You've been talking ever since you come in here. And I let it slide, but you two may not like each other. I, I don't care. The reality is when you're in here, because you guys couldn't do it when you were on Zoom, you'll be respectful to each other. Sure. How much time do you think you need to move? Because probably like a month. I'm looking right now. Well, here here's the thing. Ms. Wenger is entitled to, you know, I don't see any reason why she shouldn't have a judgment for possession. So the, and she'd get basically 10 days under the statute. I need a little uh, longer than that if I could. I'm not opposed to moving, but like I said, I have foster care workers coming to my house. I, there's a bunch of people involved and I don't have anywhere to go right this second. I found a house in Lincoln Park. Are you done? No. Because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep trying to talk if you're just gonna talk. So you you tell me when you're done and then I'll address well, the question to Miss West. Dollars a month because I'm running seven space heaters in there to heat the house so the pipes don't freeze. So, so you, what? There's no heat. I provided space. So heaters. what do you want me to do about that? Nothing. I would like to be appointed counsel. I tried getting counsel. I don't this is a civil case i don't appoint counsel okay well i tried to get a lawyer i can't afford one well i think we advised you at the initial hearing on all of the cases that have been before me that there's legal services right i don't know who to call i just have a lot going on your honor i'm sorry my kids got taken away from me there's no evidence it's just a bunch of crap going on it doesn't mean that I won't move, though. But I'd really like to sue her, but that's fine. I'll just leave. But I have to find somewhere to go. Are you done? Are you Lots done? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Winger, how much time would you be willing to give her above the 10 days, if any? I would give her two weeks. Okay, so you'll say you'd give her 14 days. Yes. Yeah. Right. What the 28th is I'm off. Different 29th. The silent Simpson moments. We love the silent Simpson moments. And speaking of awkward, remember when I trolled everybody for the 5,000 for my 5K trick? 
that that herb. All right. So here's what I'm gonna do. Copyright. Strike me. 14 days. It's gonna fall somewhere in the middle because of the timing. Today's the 29th. She'd get 10 days. So 30th, 31st. Ten days would be the eighth, which would be a weekend anyway, which would then effectively be the tenth. If I give fourteen days, it's going to be the middle of the week, April twelfth, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to give an additional five days to get through that weekend and then make it April seventeenth. Okay? Swinger, you understand what I'm indicating? Yes, I do. And would that be acceptable to you, the 17th? Yes, it is. Additional does. five days. Okay. Ms. Hosmer, I realize you wanted a month, but that's sort of shy of a month, but a writ wouldn't issue to the 17th. Is that acceptable to you? What is a writ? A writ is the order of eviction. Okay. So then I can come back here, and if I need a couple more days, no, you would not you would not be able to do that. So here's how the process works. Yes, Wenger would have to file a judgment today so that I could sign it, giving you and the writ date or what we call the writ date or the order of eviction date would be the seventeenth. You'd have to be out by the seventeenth. If you're not out by the seventeenth, then uh Miss Wenger would have to then file what's called the order of eviction or the writ with the court. Once I receive that, then I sign off on it. That then goes to the sheriff's department. Okay. And then from there, you're really on borrowed time because the sheriff can show up, they can do, and then they move you out because you haven't moved yourself out. I'm working on it. No, I know you are, but I'm just saying that's the process that it would follow. Do you understand that process? Yes. Okay. So, so basically, it would buy me like three more days. Is that what you're saying? 72 hours? Well, I put 72 hours on the red, but I will tell you this, that as I tell everyone, I don't have to put that 72 on there. Right. I may not in this case. Don't bank on it. Okay. So you're looking at the 17th. And you should really have yourself ready to move because at that time, it's just borrowed time. And I'm not going to stop the writ from being executed or the order of eviction. Once they've served it, I'm done. Okay. I'm not going to, I've signed the order. It's sure. going to happen. Okay. I appreciate it. Okay. That. You understand that? Yes. Okay. I'm not that, going to I mean, I just, I have a lot going on, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I so the, what this basically does is it gives you effectively... 10 days more than statutory, five days more than Ms. Wenger was giving you. Okay. That's what I'm going to do in the case. Sure. All right? Is there, I'm almost afraid to ask, but is there anything else from either side in this case? Ms. Wenger, anything from you? No. Tosmer, anything from you? No. All right, very good. Ms. Wenger, I would suggest that you, since you're in the building, mm -hmm. stop at the counter, fill out, the, tell them, that you need a judgment form, build a judgment form out so that they can get it down to me so I can sign it. Okay? Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. And that was great. Oh, baby, I got a doozy for you. I got a doozy for you. We haven't seen her in a while. I have a doozy. Okay. Judge Grandma. It's a double whammy for Judge Grandma. It's a youngin'. That needs to be taught a lesson. Get out the doilies. Roll out the plastic cushions. Judge Thomas is in the house. Start up the Buick, people. Let's roll. Oh, and the it was a copyright claim because I played his music. So we're sharing the monetization on that stream. Don't go using Law Chronicle music. Goddamn you, time served. <laughs> here we go. Let's go, Judge Thomas. Welcome to all the newbies in here. I love it, guys. Newbies, welcome. Our moderators make you feel good. This is the best chat on LawTube, guys. And you are in possession of a 
I got it. Case number 23. One. I wear my sunglasses to court so I can, so I can plead no contest to the judge. Zero, six, zero. The people of the state of Michigan versus Alan Kendrick. Good morning, Your Honor. John KCP number 56162 on behalf of the people. Good morning, Judge John Graziani, appearing on behalf of Alan Kendra, P number 43387. Where's Kendra? <clears throat> I'm right here. Please state your name for the record, sir. Alan Kendra. Thank you. Um, we have a negotiated settlement. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm testimony you're about to give in this matter will be the truth? Yes. All right. Put your hand down. Mr. Kendra, it's my understanding that you're going to plead guilty to one count, unlawful driving away of my automobile, knowing the maximum penalty you could get is five years in prison, as well as guilty to one count leading police, fourth degree, knowing the maximum penalty for that offense is two years in prison. Is that what you intend to do, sir? Huh? You gonna plead guilty to those two charges? Yes, Alan. I don't know, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. There's a sentence agreement whereby you will be placed on probation for three years. Understood? Yes. You have to have a mental health evaluation treatment as directed. Understood? Yes. It's going to be Judge Joanna, ma'am. Huh? You're going to say, ju yes, Judge, yes, Your oh. Honor, or yes, oh. ma'am. <laughs> yes, Honor. All yes, right. Yeah. You also will have to have uh, substance abuse testing and screening. You'll have to pay restitution. You understand that? Yes. I can't get a judge, Your Honor. Oh, man. yes, Your Honor. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not, I don't go to court. Okay, well, you know, Shocker. when you talk to old folks, you try to give them a title. Okay. And I try to give you one just out of respect. Yes, Your Honor. The restitution has been determined to be $14,931.96. Understood? Yes. Sorry, I can't stop laughing. Can I turn my video off? Uh, no, because I got to prove you the one that did this. Oh. Stay on okay. video, Alan, please. All right, the court will set other terms and conditions. The prosecutor has also agreed that at the time of sentencing, they will dismiss count one, receiving concealed and stolen property more than $20,000, and count three, receiving and concealed and stolen property motor vehicle. Do you understand all of the terms of the agreement, young man? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. And with that understanding, you're ready to plead guilty at this time. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Young man, you are entitled to a trial in this matter by judge or by jury. And by pleading guilty, there will be no trial of any kind. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. You have a right, young man, to be presumed innocent until proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, and you're giving up that right. Understood, young man? Yes, Your Honor. Young man, if you did have a trial, your attorney would be able to cross-examine, question all witnesses brought against you. If you had witnesses you wanted brought to court, the court would assist you in bringing your witnesses forward. Also, at a trial, you could testify if you wanted to, if you did not wish to testify, you could remain silent and your silence could not be held against you. And you're giving up all three of those rights, understood? Yes, Your Honor. Young man, this, there is no automatic right of appeal. If you change your mind and at some later date, 
you want this case reviewed by a higher court, you would have to get leave or permission of the court in order to have it reviewed. Reviewable issues are limited to all matters and proceedings up to and including sentencing only. Understood? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Young man, anybody threaten you to make you give up your rights and enter this plea? No. Anybody promise you anything other than what I said today to make you give up your rights, young man? No. Oh, no, Your Honor. Young no, man, yeah. are you I, acting of your own free will? Yes, Your Honor. And young man, are you a citizen of the United States of America? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Casey, did you wish to vador? Yes, Your Honor, thank you. Mr. Kendrick, this is Assistant Prosecutor John Casey speaking. I'm gonna ask you a few questions. If you either okay. can't hear me or, thank, thank you. If the question doesn't make sense to you, will you let me know? Okay. Thank you. I want to direct your attention back to uh, February the 17th of this year, just before two o'clock in the morning. Were you in the area of 4201 St. Antoine Street in the city of Detroit? That's the Detroit Medical Center, the hospital up there. Were you in that area at about that time on that date? Correct. And did you uh, hop into a, a ambulance that was uh, at the hospital there? Correct. And did you drive the ambulance away from the hospital? Correct. Okay. And at the time you weren't working there as a as an ambulance driver, were you? No. Okay. And uh, at some point in time, did the police officer get behind you and try to pull you over? Yes, Your Honor. I mean, correct. Just, just Mr. Casey, that's fine. And uh, did you stop or did you keep going until the uh, tires blew out? I stopped when I seen the cop cars, so yes. Is that when the tires blew out in the vehicle? Yeah, because it was raining and it's snowing. I don't God, know why the tires. The people are satisfied. Satisfied, Charge. All right, the court will enter a plea of guilty, one count unlawful driving away of a motor vehicle, one count fourth degree fleeing police. Young man, you got pencil and paper handy? No. Judge, I'll, I'll send him the information. All right. Young man, tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, you have to call the probation department. Okay. They're going to give you some appointments. Now, they may do them over Zoom. They may ask you to come in, but you'll have to go and talk to the probation department so that okay. they can compare, they can make a report and give it to me and your attorney so that we can sentence you when you come back to court. Okay. Now your return date for sentencing is going to be? May 16th. May the 16th. May the 16th. So you got to talk to the probation department before then. Okay, I will. I'll call them tomorrow, Your Honor. All right, your lawyer's going to make sure you get the numbers. Sir, do you have that number 313-224-2600? I do, Judge. All right, good. And I will give it to Mr. Kendred. All righty. Okay. I'll see you on May 16th at 9 o'clock. Okay, bye-bye, Your Honor. Thank you for your patience, sir, Judge. Thank sure. you so much. I, can I will leave. talk to you in a bit, Mr. Kendred. Yes, okay. you're free to leave, Mr. Kendred. Thank you. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't leave. Emma, what you need? His telephone number and verification of his address. Mr. Kendred, what's your phone number? 313-917-6372. This is real. And what's your, go ahead, Al. Do you still live on Dorton Street? I'm homeless now, but my auntie stay there. You can use that as a mailing address. Emma, that's correct. He has confirmed that with me. It is used as a mailing address, and he goes there at least twice a week. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, have a good day. Happily, y'all too. Thank you, Charge. Thank you for everything. Come on. She never disappoints. I think her court clerk is literally sitting right next to her with a bowl of strawberry hard candy, <laughs> tea, cold tea, 
a game of solitaire and like and like the docket numbers, it's not like it's like a printout with the old, you know, the old holes, <laughs> and the rest is like written out. And then she's using a Rolodex. Oh no, 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 Deborah, no! <laughs> Tell him we need his address. <laughs> Will you shut up? I can't. I love it. It's not real. This isn't real. All right, we're gonna we're gonna jump to uh, we're gonna jump to. Um, my new judge, she's she's always flashing. Uh, she always has pretty good cases. You always heard about her. She's probably in your um, subscribe uh, side panel. She is uh, Miriam Perry. And she had two doozies today. I'm going to show you the first one. It's really good. Um, and then we got Judge Webster coming up. I have, I'm premiering first for Judge Wolf. I know there's a lot of Wolf Pack fans in this, in this chat. I got a Judge Wolf case. I just have so much stuff that I record because I, I put so much effort into this and I because I really love to see you guys get excited when I produce good content. It really it's really great. So keep it going in the in the comments. Let's have a good time. Here we go. All right. Have you had the opportunity to review the pre-sentence report and were there any additions or deletions? Your Honor, we have had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence uh, report and I have discussed it with Mr. Schur and we are uh, satisfied with uh, the content of it. Um, the parties had a brief conversation with the court uh, in a breakout session earlier uh, and I understand the court uh, intends to impose a longer term of probation than is recommended in the final pre-sentence report. Um, and uh, I understand why the court is going to do that. Uh, other than uh, that, I think the rest of the conditions are fairly standard for a case like this and appropriate. And uh, we ask the court simply to follow the recommendation, knowing that the court's gonna impose a longer term of probation. All right. Is Twyla Tardif present and which, does she wish to make a statement to the court? Yeah, she is. Allison Barnes, thank you for all your hard work. It's awesome. Thank you, Allison. Mr. Mr. Collins, uh, Mr. Collins isn't a uh, listed victim as, as, as defined under the statute. However, the course of conduct, you know, he was a collateral victim as, as all of this came through um, as a Miss Miss Tardiff and 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 Mr. Uh, Collins are um, are partners. Um, so you know he was affected um, you know indirectly, if not directly, um, by this as well. And so he's also here, though I I don't believe that under the Crime Victims Rights Act he'd be able to give a um, a, 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 a statement um, unless the court were to allow him. And, uh, but I did want to, I know Twyla is going to say what she wants to say. And I just wanted to suggest that, um, and maybe that, you know, Mr. Schur come to a re realization of how his actions can affect more than just those who are directly implicated. Um, but I'll let Ms. Uh, Tardiff make her statement now. Ms. Tardiff, um, could you please state your name for the record? Yeah, Your Honor, um, my name is Twyla Tardiff. All right. What would you like to tell me? Um, one moment. Let me pull it up. Thank you. And Mr. Collins is present. I will speak on his behalf, but um, if there is an opportunity, I know he would like to say at least a couple of words. But first of all, thank you, Judge Perry, Mr. Oblak, and Mr. Emmons. I appreciate this opportunity to speak to the impact that Mr. Schur's behavior has had on me my partner, my friends, and my family. As you have seen from the communications that both Mr. Collins and I received from Mr. Scher, as well as those received by my friends, my family, and my colleagues, Mr. Scher engaged in a pervasive attempt to destroy my most treasured relationship, as well as my career. And as you just witnessed through the Zoom link, which he uses regularly when he presides in his own courtroom, and therefore understands the nature of court appearances through Zoom, 
he continues to be hostile and abusive towards my partner, whom he has never met and who has done absolutely nothing to provoke Mr. Schur. Why? Because I said no. I told him that I no longer felt that a relationship with him was in my best interest and that I intended to carry on with my life, including the pursuit of a relationship with somebody else. I was not married to Mr. Schur, nor was I engaged to him. At the time, I was not even dating Mr. Schur. Yet somehow he felt that I did not have the right to make this choice for myself and that he needed to warn numerous people of importance to me about my immorality, as he put it, and supposed deception. I did not deceive Mr. Schur. I simply did not conform to his desires. And despite multiple occasions in which I told him to stop and my partner told him to stop, he did not. He continued after we blocked him on each and every channel, continued to create to contact both me and my partner, not only on social media, but through our respective business, and attempted to shame me on Facebook and through email messages to my brother and to my friends and colleagues. One can certainly imagine the impact this might have had but let's talk about the impact it actually had. I experienced several relationship-based trauma as a child, as did my partner, Mr. Collins. Not only did Mr. Schur's behavior trigger these traumas, he also used the facts of my own traumas against me by claiming that I was using it somehow to manipulate him and would therefore use it to manipulate my partner. He used this line of reasoning to send horrific messages to both me and my partner, as well as to my colleagues and friends, and to my brother, who is well aware of these traumas. This caused enormous pain. It also caused my partner enormous pain and pain my brother, who was struggling with heart issues at the time and was days away from a procedure designed to preserve his life. What have we done with this? Instead of lashing out at Mr. Schur, which we were all tempted to do, we dealt with it as responsible and respectful adults experiencing physical and emotional pain. My partner initiated therapy after receiving several of these messages. I extended my therapy and spent several sessions speaking about the behaviors and their impact. And the two of us have been going to couples therapy since shortly after the messages began. My brother forwarded the brief message asking him why I was, and I quote, a S L U T, and called me up the night he was supposed to be resting and preparing for his procedure. I don't know if I can ever forgive someone who did this to people he bar either barely knew or didn't know at all. And yet holding this inside feels awful. So I must forgive, that's my way forward. As for the impact on my career, as Mr. Schur well knew, I was in the process of resigning my position from the University of Michigan and beginning a new position in Maine, where I am now teaching at the College of the Atlantic. I am a professor of psychology and I work with other professors and psychologists. Like judges and lawyers, much of our ability to earn a living and to be effective in our job rests on our interactions with the public and with our colleagues. Our reputation matters every bit as much, if not more than our degrees. And yet Mr. Schur took it upon himself to reach out to a colleague of mine who was also a former mentor to ask what was quote, wrong with me. Then when we received her non-committal, he received her non-committal reply, he proceeded to forward it to me saying he wasn't the only one who thought I was quote, crazy. Because my colleague cared about me, she contacted me immediately. And we then had an extremely awkward conversation about a matter that had no business in a professional relationship. And because that didn't seem to be enough, he proceeded to threaten to contact my new employer to quote, warn them about me. Because he followed up on this threat with other people, I was extremely concerned and I contacted my new employer myself to let them know that they might receive such a message. This was certainly not the way I would want anyone to have to start out a new job. Mr. Schur's behavior was against the law, and as a lawyer in the state of Michigan and a federal judge, 
Mr. Schur knew that. He also knew that because of the many warnings and incremental approach that was taken to ask him to stop, he knew that his behavior was hurtful and immoral and even sent me a message telling me he would stop because his own therapist had told him his behavior was, quote, wildly inappropriate. And when he was contacted by the Ann Arbor police and told to stop, he said he would. Still, he did not stop. Instead, he sent a message asking me to apologize my, to my partner on his behalf. When I did not respond, he continued to send hurtful and demeaning messages to my partner. And when he was finally served a warrant for arrest, he employed Mr. Shea, one of the most experienced defense lawyers in Southeast Michigan. Mr. Shea was a great advocate for Mr. Schur and wanted to make sure that he was not harmed by such, quote, trivial behavior. And yet every delay that Mr. Shea requested on behalf of understanding the impact that these charges would have on his client and his client's career resulted in additional pain and trauma to me, my partner, and my family. And while I appreciate that Mr. Schur, under Mr. Shea's counsel, agreed to plead guilty to a lesser charge, improper use of an electronic device, and that he has acted in good faith after the state prosecutor decided to move forward with the case, I would like both Judge Perry and most Mr. Oblatt to be clear about the impact that his behavior has had not just on me, but on the people around me. Why? Because Mr. Schur could not respond to no, and in his own words, has trouble with rejection. I respectfully ask that you please consider, as you move forward with sentencing, the numerous deceptions, false profiles, and sheer amount of time and effort that Mr. Schur undertook to damage my reputation and effectively harm not only myself, but my daughter, my family, and my friends, the people I'm closest to for the sole purpose of avenging the pain he experienced because I communicated clearly that I no longer wish to have any form of romantic or dating relationship with him. I would like an apology. It would not be enough, but Certainly it would be appreciated, not just towards me, but towards Mr. Collins, my family, my friends, my colleagues, and that Mr. Schur is able to participate in some form of counseling that will require him to closely examine his behaviors and his continued anger, and to consider why he would go to such extreme lengths to damage the lives of so many people. I hope that he will be accountable for all of his actions including today's outburst, and to participate in whatever means available to engage in deep thought and consideration. Specifically, I hope he will spend at least the same amount of time and energy contemplating what it was inside of him that caused him to react with such rage over and over again, repeating and compounding the harm every time that he did and that he will come to understand why all it took was a simple no for him to justify his right or his supposed right to inflict such harm and to damage the lives of people he didn't even know. I hope that one day he will understand the many hours he spent scheming and plotting new ways to destroy me could have been much better spent in healing and in helping others to find ways forward with their own pain and difficulties. Well, that's all, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Tardif, are you aware of what's being recommended? I am not fully aware. I understood that he pled guilty to a lesser charge, which I don't agree is appropriate, but I understand. Right. Were you consulted prior to the the police? I was consulted and I said I did not agree, but things need, they need, the prosecutor needed to do what he needed to do. All right. And so you. Just to catch everybody up. So, um, and what wasn't seen and what I, what I what wasn't recorded 
because they didn't have it, was he was caught on the Zoom link, um, hot mic, threatening her. And uh, the judge heard it, the courts heard it, it was on record, uh, and they address it. Um, I went back, it wasn't when it was on live on YouTube, it was when they were coming into the meeting room. He f He's just crazy, and apparently he didn't even care that he was entering court, the Zoom court. And uh, I was waiting for a video, uh, audio of it, but there's not, but they address it. Uh, her partner gets on, everything this gets. She was a little long-winded, but all the participants get into it. So that's what it is. He's stalking, terroristic threats, all that kind of stuff. He's a real winner, Mr. Sure. And yes, he does need a maid. You um, told the prosecutor you didn't agree with what was being offered? I have an email to that effect but I did say that it was his judgment call and I never been in such a case before. All right. And I received um, a copy of some of, of your um, statement that you made today. Um, one of the, the one I had has, and I received that today, um, earlier today. Thanks. And I did There's, send late last night saying that I would make revisions this morning. Okay, got it. And you, you're you saying you didn't have a chance to speak with Mr. O'Black? No. Nope. All right. All right. And Your Honor, you if I... have, in, I'm still Surprise. speaking with Ms. Tardif. I'll, I'll give better. you an opportunity, certainly. Um, Ms. Tardif, um, when you, um, in terms of this, um, this is the date and time set for sentence. And um, when you indicated you wish for him to be held accountable, you want him to get counseling, um, and you, so I'm just trying to make sure what is it that you're looking for today in terms of the sentence. This is the kind of thing that typically in advance I would have your perspective, but I don't have that. I'm getting it right now. So I do want to find out what it is um, in terms of sentence that you're, you're looking for. This is clearly your discretion, Judge Perry. I do wish to have it acknowledged that his behavior was not one act that it was repeated acts over and over again. It was basis. It involved not just me, but contact with multiple other people. And that he even created false profiles, which are documented in the original case. And well, I don't- I've, I've, I've definitely, I've read the full right. police and, report. I'm very aware. And I understand this is through the domestic victims unit but he is a federal judge. He is licensed to practice law in the state of Michigan, and yet he created false identities to contact, to continue to harass me. I don't know how to file those charges. I contacted the Ann Arbor police, and I moved forward with that in good faith. I wanted some accountability. I don't want him put behind, behind bars for years and years but I want him to be a responsible citizen and understand that violence <laughs> can come in multiple forms, not just in you know, the form of punching somebody in the face, which takes a few seconds. All right, and you indicated that, um, let's see, that you wanted, um, let me, I'd have to refer back to my report, but you indicated that you had some there, someone there that wanted to make a brief statement. Would you like to make a statement? Um, Can I do it on her site or do I have to? Yes. Could you state your name for the record? Hi, I'm uh, Robert Craig Collins and um, I just want to mention how well, I couldn't hear I, oh, it kind of I'm garbled not, because you're moving the camera and things. Could okay. you state your name again? Yes, it's Robert Craig Collins. All right. Go ahead, and, uh, sir. 
I have been seeing uh, uh, a partner of Twyla since uh, August. And um, I received these messages from Mr. Shear in September in reference to he saw me in a, in a Facebook post. And I don't know this woman in any shape, form. And the, I, and the, the comments that he sent me were just completely out of control. I have no idea why he sent them. I, I did nothing wrong to him. I never met the man. I'm just so beyond myself why I deserve to be treated that way. And it, it affected me deeply. It affected me to the point where I needed to, to seek a therapist and I didn't understand why I was, I was being treated that way. And it, it really hurt. And I just can't believe a person of this profession has the ability to do that. And without without thinking he has repercussions. And I feel sickened by that. I really do. And I really, 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 really would appreciate some sort of an apology from this gentleman. And that's my thank you, sir. Mr. Emmons, when I was talking to Ms. Tardis, you were um, wanting to speak, and I just said I'd give you your chance. What is it that you'd like to say, Mr. Emmons? I just wanted to indicate, I did receive an email from Mr. Oblack. I think he attempted to try to reach out to Ms. Tardiff. And I think that given the circumstances that Ms. Tardiff has, uh, has undergone, you know, it would be understandable if she didn't accept the phone call from a number she didn't recognize. So I, I don't think that there was any intentional um, avoidance of each other. I think it just kind of, given the circumstances, didn't work out. But I, I wanted to make sure that I, I was under the impression that Mr. Oblack did attempt to reach out to her, to her um, but I think it's understandable that the two might not have connected. Oh, I absolutely know that Mr. Oblack reached out to her, but I don't have any information today because he was unsuccessful. All right, Ms. Mr. Shea, anything further from you? Yes, Your Honor. Um, uh, first, Ms. Tardiff makes some statements or implications uh, about me that are not true. I've never referred to this case as trivial. I've never referred to Mr. Schur's behavior as trivial. Um, also, uh, there's some uh, suggestion that by uh, that I've I've deliberately delayed this in a manner or two that 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 benefits uh, Mr. Schur in in some fashion. Mr. Schur pled guilty at the third pretrial. Uh, it's this is not a case that has uh, a terribly long history uh, in the court. Uh, there are many cases that are far, take far longer to resolve than this one did, uh, and we resolved it as quickly as we did. Um, because we took it seriously. Uh, and I had numerous conversations with Mr. Emmons about it uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of getting it resolved. So uh, I wanted to uh, clear the record uh, as far as those two things are concerned. Um, look, there is no defending the statements and the actions that, that Mr. Schur took uh, toward Ms. Tardiff and toward her partner. Uh, and I'm not here to do that. Um, I, I, I am going to say that the situation is more complicated than meets the eye, as many of these relationship gone bad cases are. Um, but that's no excuse for the behavior. Um, I, I appreciate Ms. Tardiff's um, observation about what responsible adult behavior is in difficult circumstances, and Mr. Schur did not engage in that uh, when it came to how he communicated uh, with Ms. Tardiff, with Ms. Tardiff and with Mr. Collins uh, and with uh, others uh, whom, Ms., as Ms. Tardiff has described. Um, I will say that Mr. Schur is 64 years old. He's never been accused of doing anything like this before. Um, he's never been in trouble with the law before uh, of any kind. Um, he is in therapy. 
uh, and has been for a number of years. And there are issues that he is dealing with already that predated Ms. Tardif, um, but it certainly uh, would be of benefit to him to have something more targeted as it relates to this behavior. And that's been recommended by Mr. O'Black and we understand why that is and why that is appropriate. Mr. Scher apologized at the plea hearing. He will apologize again. Um, it is clear from the remarks he made uh, uh, interjected into an earlier part of this session that he's still pretty deeply hurt by this. Um, and that was a hot mic moment that he should have known better uh, regarding. Um, uh, but he did it and he heard it and he said it and we heard it and uh, uh, and it, it, it illustrates the pain that he uh, feels as well. And there are reasons why he feels that pain. Um, again, doesn't excuse his behavior. I think uh, Mr. O'Black's um, recommendation is thoughtful and appropriate. Uh, and I'd, again, ask the court to follow it. Mr. Sher, what would you like to tell me? Thank you for the opportunity, Your Honor. First, regarding this morning, I had no idea that I spoke out loud, much less that my microphone wasn't muted. And I, uh, I just apologize to you and the court and uh, and everyone else that heard it. Um, you know, I just mostly want to say I'm incredibly deeply ashamed for, about my conduct and my failure to um, control my behavior. I want to apologize again to Ms. Tardif, as well as to Mr. Collins and everyone else that I harmed during this process. Um, you know, this was something I've never done before and I will never do ever again. Um, I just want the court to know that I've already um, uh, registered for the Accountable Choices Program and will um, uh, be attending my first session tonight and intend to take that program as seriously as possible and fully participate. Um, and again, I, I just regret all of the pain and harm that I have caused during this process. All right. Thank you, Mr. Sure. Um, I'm, I'm still, I'm trying to, I've, I've looked at this case um, in detail. Um, I've received a lot of information today. Um, what happens in these cases, um, just to kind of give background, is when a person pleads guilty, then they're referred to probation. I get a pre-sentence report, and um, I saw Ms. Tardif on the last time we were here. And um, I was thinking that she would, her section would be included in my victim uh, statement from the pre-sentence report and that part is blank. And so that was something I was wondering about. And then I went in a breakout room and I received a draft of the impact statement and I spoke to Mr. O'Black. It's my understanding he tried to reach you and he was not successful. Um, looking at the pre-sentence report, the police report, um, many people don't realize um, that judges don't have all this information unless and until a person is found guilty or they plead guilty. So when we were last in court, the plea agreement was laid out to me and um, right on the record, um, I believe Mr. Schur asked for no upfront jail, and then um, this court agreed to that um, based on the information I had at that time, which was not much information, but just what was provided. It was my understanding, typically, um, that um, prosecutors will consult um, victims but you know the ultimate decision is up to the prosecutor as to what they offer and what they don't offer. Um, in this case, 
um, the behavior listed. Oh my God. Okay, getting a lot of little hot mics today. Um, the behavior listed, um, I was, once I received the full information about what this case involved, that high, hot mic said something about pajamas, I think. I rewound it a couple of times. The hot mic said something about pajamas. Oh, I was um, kind of just, it gave me pause um, in terms of uh, the agreement that I made up front of no upfront jail, to be honest. And so, um, after listening to Ms. Tardif, um, that's not um, what she's requesting, Jail. She's requesting that um, an apology to herself, her partner, her um, family and friends that have been affected by this, and she's requesting treatment so that no one else would have to go through this in the future. And so um, I do look at um, Mr. Shea, what he has presented. Here we have a situation, this case started out of a, as a stalking. Mr. Sher, Mr. Sher was offered malicious use of telecommunication. The stalking was dismissed. Prosecutor also offered the prosecutors to deferred, and this court agreed to no upfront jail. And based on Ms. Tardif, I'm going to honor all of that, even with the hot mic or the intentional mic. I, I don't know what happened with the mic. Ms. Tardif um, made a good point, but being someone who's on Zoom, I know that hot mic happen quite often, even if you're experienced um, with it. Um, what I'll do, as I do with all cases, is, is I give people a chance. And so um, in this case, um, there's no prior criminal history, but this case is quite egregious. Um, I'm going to take into consideration- I don't care um, that I'm live, be quiet. The, Give me some pajamas. Recommendations from Mr. O'Black and take into consideration the information I received from Ms. Tardis. So with that in mind, I'm going to sentence you to 180 days jail, 180 days jail suspended on timely completion of probation. Do you understand that, Mr. Sher? Yes, Your Honor. And you understand if there's a violation in terms of any continued contact, I wouldn't hesitate to okay. impose that time. Do you understand All right. that? All right, thank you. Yes, Your Honor. All right, can you put him in the waiting room? I'm going to sentence you to 24 months probation with Mr. Oblak. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Fines and costs will be $425. How much time did you need to pay that? I could pay it on Friday. All right, I'll say within seven days, which would be. Is that something I can eight... do? Your Honor, I'm sorry. Yes, it is. Thank you. That will be by April 5th. Uh, probation oversight fees. Of let's see here. Night Peach. $960. You're to continue with the Accountable Choices Program. Um, and I'll say a minimum. I'm going to say a minimum of 36 sessions. And you'll you'll learn um, from Mr. O'Black what's needed uh, to comply with that. You're restricted from having any alcohol in your household. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You're to submit to and pay for random alcohol drug testing <clears throat> as requested by the court, probation, or any treatment provider. 
year to provide monthly verification of compliance of, of all the conditions to probation, year to maintain um, employment. I'll cancel all conditions of pretrial release on lien and I'll enter the following conditions. No contact with Twyla Tarda whatsoever. Do you understand that? Absolutely. That would include her family and her partner. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. No assaulting, threatening behavior toward Ms. Tarda or anyone else. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You're restrained from harassing, stalking, threatening, or engaging in any conduct that would place Twyla Tarda or her partner in a reasonable fear of bodily injury. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. You're not to leave the state of Michigan uh, without permission, uh, without prior approval from probation. Do you understand that? Yes, although my I have work in Toledo, Your Honor. Do I need to contact Mr. Oblek before? I, I don't go regularly, but sometimes it's once a week. That's where my office is. All right. I'll say you're you're to request permission to court to leave Michigan um, from probation, but you may go to Toledo for work. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. No use or possession of alcohol, recreational marijuana, or any illegal drug, and no being in the presence of anyone using illegal drugs. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. No use or possession of firearms, firearm components, ammunition, or dangerous weapons. No being in the company of anyone carrying or using firearms or dangerous weapons. Yes, Your Honor. Now, I I do believe that you should write a letter to Ms. Tardif, but it does to me it doesn't mean a lot for me to put that as an order in this um, in your probation, but. Um, that is something um, that I'm suggesting beyond just what you put on the record today. I'm suggesting that you write a letter to Ms. Tarda um, with the apology. But like I said, it, me ordering it takes something away from that. But I, I'm going to note, I'm putting a note down that that's what I'm suggesting that you do. And I'm going to see if, how, how you handle that. Do you understand that? Yes. Judge, if he does that, he should probably submit it to Mr. Oblack rather than sending it directly to her, given the no contact order. Certainly, certainly. That was my thought as well. Okay, very good. All right. And I'll set this matter for review May 3rd at 10 o'clock to see how things are going. And it will be the first review, so I'm not excusing you. Very good. Oh, and I have to inform you, if, if you wish to file an appeal and are financially unable to retain a lawyer, you may advise the court now or make the request within 14 days in writing, and the court will refer you to the local appointing authority. Do you have any questions? Okay, now I'm going to give you a visual. It just has nothing to do with a case. I'm going to get right off of it. Just can someone tell me what's going on in this picture? Are we ready? So, um, I don't have his contact information. I'm assuming I can find it on the... Um, we ready? I don't think we're ready for this. <laughs> what is going on here? What's up with... What's going on? Is that a political... What? What is going on? They look like they're going to beat the... 
the shite out of everyone on Zoom. I do not. Look at the judge. She's freaked out. What's going on? Comments, go right ahead. Tell me what you think that visual is. Because I don't know. <laughs> Sweet Jesus. Okay, next up is our boy. He's been on this show plenty of times. My boy, Mr. Dry, Dr. Pepper drinking, Judge Aguilar out of Dallas. He is awesome. He doesn't move. He makes great Zoom faces. And he's dealing with uh, child support again. And this guy just gets smart with him. We got He's not, the guy's not a deadbeat dad at all. Um, it's just... Some people rub Judge Aguilar the wrong way, and he's one of them. Just wait for it. I'd like to take testimony from both parties to see if that's their, their agreement and to go over unagreed terms. Ma'am, can, yeah. you, ma can you state your full name for the record? There you good acre. And ma'am, what are the names? What is the name and the age of the child in this case? I, Ivy Moorhead, and she's three. Okay. And ma'am, did you hear the agreed portions that I just told Judge Aguilar and that were read into the record? Yes. And those are still your agreements? Yes. Um that yes. Is that a yes, ma'am? Yes, um, I know we had disagreed about the child support portion, but I, that's not that portion, right? Not yet, ma'am. We'll get to that. Okay, in so yes. Yes, I do. All right, ma'am. And do you think that those are in, that those agreements are in the best interest of your child? Yes. And ma'am, um, you had in your agreements, you had yes. agreed that there had been no family violence between you and the father um, is that correct? Yes. Yes. And so you have no safety concerns with your um, address being disclosed in this court order? No. Um, and you don't have any safety concerns with the father having access to the child? No. All right, ma'am. Um, can you tell us how the child receives um, health coverage? She has Medicaid. And ma'am, do you have um, any private insurance available for the child? Um, no, ma'am. And he smoked. No, ma'am. I have, um, but I have state insurance as well. What was that, ma'am? Um, I have insurance through the state as well, like Texas Women's, but I don't have like private insurance for the child, ma'am. Like maybe through an mm -hmm. employer or through the marketplace. No, no. Okay. And um, ma'am, what is the reason that you um, disagree with medical support being set today? Um, Ms. I think it was just um, because he, I, I think he was disagreeing with the $22. Okay. So ma'am, let me ask you that. The state has calculated medical support at $22 um, per month beginning April 1st. Are you in agreement or disagreement with that amount? Um, disagree, I guess, because I, I, I don't know, snap, disagree. Okay, and ma'am, the state has calculated $153 for child support in this case, are you in agreement or disagreement? 
Disagree. Um, and can you tell Judge Aguilar why you disagree with child support being set at $153? Um, I just disagree because we've kind of already had like a little system that we worked out where he just pays the 125 to daycare. And anytime I kind of need anything or if she's needing anything and I ask, he pretty much does it. So I don't, you know, I, I don't, it, he's basically kind of already doing that, basically. So that's why I just disagree because I mean, as I, I, you know, does that make sense? All right, ma'am, do you have any additional information that you would like to offer to the court? No, ma'am. Okay. I would like now to call the father. Sir, can you state um, your name for the record? Kevin Moorhead. <clears throat> and sir, did you hear the agreed portions that I read into the record earlier? I do. And are those still your agreements? Correct. And sir, part of those agreements was that you and the mother had said that there had been no family violence between you. Has there been any family violence between you? No, ma'am. Do you have any safety concerns with your- And they both don't know how to use Zoom. Because that is, look, the Zoom, they it's cut off. It's not me. That's them. <laughs> they had the- your address being disclosed in this court order? No, ma'am. All right, sir. Um, and the state had calculated um, medical support in the amount of $22 beginning April 1st. Are you in agreement or disagreement with that amount? I uh, disagree. All right, sir. And do you have private insurance available to your child? Uh, for your no. child? No, but um, you know, get it. You can get it through where, sir? Uh, through the next my my job that I'm beginning. So, are you saying you have a job that you're starting no. in the future? I don't have a job right. Now. And I'm, so, I'm sorry for pausing, but the court reporter with the Black Lives Matter shirt, she chews gum and makes faces at defendants the entire time on zoom she already made about three or four snickers she just snickers and fusses with people it's hysterical and judge aguilar does not address it he doesn't care <laughs> and now but when i get a job i know that they'll offer insurance and i'll probably be able to uh put her on to my i'm not currently employed right now i don't have a job right now i'm looking but i know with the, the job that I, if i find a job i'll be able to add her to my health benefits and sir, are you aware that if you get private insurance through your employer or through the marketplace, you can reach out to the Office of Attorney Generals if the judge orders medical support to try to stop that? Uh, yes. All right, sir. Um, and the state, and you said that you weren't working, is that correct? Correct. Are you um, disabled? No. Okay. And um, do you understand that child support was based on the minimum wage presumption? Yes. All right, sir. And based on that amount, you your child support was calculated to be $153. Do you agree or disagree with that amount? Um, uh... I don't, I don't really know. I don't agree with child support, period. So I don't know if I should agree or disagree. Can you tell Judge Aguilar why you disagree with um, child support being set at $153 per month? Because I'm fully in my fully in my child's life. Any, you know, I pay daycare, anything she needs. Um, one call away, and she knows whatever she needs, she got it. With any bill, even if it pertains to her, or anything else, even to my child, is there. And sir, what is the cost that you pay for daycare? Uh, I think one twenty-five or one 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 twenty-five, one fifty. I don't. Know. It's around there. All right, sir. Do you have any additional information that you? <laughs> would like to 
like to offer to the court regarding this matter? Uh, no, ma'am. Pass the witness. All right, uh, just a couple of questions. Mr. Moorhead, are you a Dallas County resident? Uh, yes, sir. We have a program called Choices that may have made an announcement this morning, I'm not sure. Uh, that can help you find a job. Are you interested in, in being involved in that free program so they can help you find a job? Mm, no. Um, uh, yeah, Thank you, sure. Jonathan. Okay. All right, so after our hearing today, you need to stay on here on Zoom so that the Choices Representative can talk to you. Um, and they're on here right now, actually on the call right now. So we just need to move you into another room after the hearing so that they can uh, give you more information about the program and they can give you some assistance on helping you find a job. Okay, okay. so um, as far as what we're here for today is regarding our case, of course, I agree to the portions at the beginning that we are, were announced. Um, the fact, of course, is that the government is helping your child by providing insurance since y'all are not able to provide health insurance through your employers. Um, and they, they may also be helping with other things as well, I'm not sure. Uh, but at least the medical is being covered through the state and so we have to do a child support order because the government does not have children. We need to make sure that parents are taking care of their children. So that's why they refer the cases to the attorney general's office for them to do child support cases because we'd rather you have you all take care of the children than the government do it. So we have to mandate that child support is ordered in those kinds of cases. And that's how we got involved and payments have to be paid through the child support office. Also, of course, uh, we do child support orders maybe for 18 years, not just for three months. So your child won't always be in daycare. There won't always be that expense. So I always be in my ahead. child's life. You have to plan ahead that uh, those that that expense will change. So as I explained, uh, you know, you got to do your part. And if it changes the way you pay it, instead of paying the daycare directly, then definitely y'all can talk about how to do that. Uh, you will have to pay the child support through the child support office, period. There's no getting around that. But if you want to do that and it gets paid to Ms. Goodacre, then Ms. Goodacre can use that money to pay the daycare. So in the end, it may not really change anything. So, right, so you're saying I'm still on child support? Uh, Mr. Moorhead, did you hear me say that the government doesn't have children and that parents should take care of their own children? Okay, okay. Okay, and the government's okay. helping your child right now, correct? Mm, as in how? How is the child covered on insurance? Uh, I mean, but I take care of my child. The government don't take care of my, I take care of my child, uh, Judge. Who covers the child on insurance and who pays for medical bills when the, the child is go to the doctor? Judge, I take care of my child, Judge. You're not answering the question. Anything my child needs, Judge, I take care of my child. The, the state doesn't take care of my child, Judge. I take care of my child. What kind of insurance is the child on, Mr. Moorhead? Uh, Thank judge, you, I take care of my child, though. Insurance oh, don't take care of my child. Judge, I take care of my child. Okay. I guess you're just not going to listen or you just don't want to answer the question. You, because uh, you child, want me to The government is covering health insurance. They're paying for almost all costs. You're not paying anything for that. So the government is helping your child. I'm not saying you don't help your child. I'm saying that the government is also helping your child. And so that's why we're involved with this case today, because you're not doing 100% of everything. You don't have insurance because you're not employed. So that's part of the problem. Obviously, hopefully you can fix that later on. But that's how we got here today because the government is involved in your case because you all asked for the government to be involved in your case by applying for Medicaid. That's okay. There's no problem with that. But you got to make sure that that now that now now that we have to change things because of, of that, okay? All right. So um, that's what I'm ordering. The payments have to be paid through the child support office. Payments paid outside of the child support office do not count and will be counted as arrears. And eventually the attorney general's office will bring you all back to court if you're not paying the way you're supposed to and try to put you in jail. I don't want to put you in jail. I'd rather you not be in court at all. So just make sure you're paying it as you've been ordered to pay it through the court system. All right, so uh, Ms. Goodacre, you're done with court. You can leave. Mr. Morehead, hang out for a minute, minute while they put you with the choice representative. So what are the payments, Judge? Out. What are the payments, Judge? I already explained that to you, Mr. Warhead. Hang on, Mr. Warhead. They're going to get you with the choice representative before you leave. What are the payments, Judge? Judge, what are the payments, Judge? Judge, what are the payments? What's your next case, Ms. Correa? What are the payments? 
Lorna will be doing number three. Okay. No. no. Shut down. Shut down. Goodbye. That's how Jug Aguilar plays. Shut him down. I told you. I told you. All right, let's get some Webster. Let's get some Judge Webster. Let's do it. I know when you were here on February 1st, you talked about maybe diversion. Did you check that out at all? Uh, so this guy is up top, is um not showing up not doing what he's supposed to do and it's time to pay the piper and that piper is judge webster looking quite sexy in her frames today and her handkerchief loving it flash the og webster signs in the chat let's roll uh um i gave i gave um the uh prosecutor a call and I think we came to an agreement of uh, dropping one of the charges and accepting the other two. All right. <clears throat> Mr. Regeer, have you reached a plea agreement in this case? Forgive me, Your Honor. I appear to have been muted. Um, I did speak with the, the defendant um, approximately um, one to two weeks ago. Uh, the state is prepared to uh, dismiss the expired tag if the defendant will plead guilty to the remaining charges. Insofar as the um, issue of diversion is concerned, the um, insurance charge appears to be charged as a class A. And that is count, count three? Uh, yes, Your Honor. So being dismissed as part of the plea agreement is count two, the registration? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And he'll plead guilty to driving while suspended. Okay, Mr. Bartell, let's go back over the, a few things. You know you do have the right to an attorney. You can hire any attorney of your choice. And if you cannot afford an attorney, do you understand that you can apply and see if you qualify for court appointed attorney. Uh, yes, I just, yes, Your Honor. I just, I don't know how to apply for the court appointed attorney. Well, you could just ask me about that if you want to. You do have the right to waive you, um, an attorney and continue to represent yourself. So at this point, are you waiving your attorney and representing yourself accepting the plea agreement or are you telling me now that you uh, want to apply for court appointed? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I think the only issue and I don't I don't really see it as an issue. Um, I reside in California. I'm in a drug rehab program and um, I've talked to the county out here and I could get my fingerprints and my picture done out here and have it sent over to the state of Kansas, would that be something that you're okay with? Okay, you kind of jumped gears on me. We, we started out talking about a plea agreement that you had reached with the state, and then you jumped into applying for a court-appointed attorney, and then you jumped into getting your fingerprints taken in California. So, Right, so it's pretty obvious that I have no clue Thank you so like much, what Tasha. I'm doing when it I'm comes to loss. this court case right now. Um, but it's my understanding that they want me to come back to the state of Kansas to give fingerprints and a picture, but that could be done here in the state of California. That's what I've been informed on, is that it could be done here and then just yeah. sent over to you guys. Yeah. Well, I don't know about that. I don't know how that would work unless you were arrested in California. Uh, Kansas law does require, we'll, we'll start backwards on the issues you've been putting out here today. Uh, Kansas law does require that all A and B misdemeanors either be arrested at the, at the stop and be processed with fingerprints and, and pictures and bonding, or you can be summoned in but then the court has to order that you go out and do those. Uh, and I did that. Are you telling me you did not go out 
like I ordered you to do on February 1st to get your picture and prints taken? Um, yeah, I talked to the person and he told me uh, to just show back up for my March 29th uh, so, court date. So no, I've been in California because that's where I live. All right, you're in violation of the court order which puts you in contempt of court which means you can be punished by fine or jail time. You just took it upon yourself that you didn't have to follow my order, huh? Um, no. I'm going to yeah. need an attorney for the rest of this trial. Uh, All right. I won't be speaking to you. Excuse me? I said I would like an attorney for the rest of my trial to represent me. To now speak. you want to speak now to you? you. Want a, now you want a trial? Well, I, don't, I have no idea what's going on here. I just don't want to go to jail. Like, I messed up. I'm in rehab right now. You guys want me to take fingerprints and pictures, but I have no way to get back to the state of Kansas unless you're going to buy me a plane ticket or help me get the transportation. Oh, good. Like, I have no problems accepting these charges, but, like, if I need a fingerprints and pictures done, I don't understand why it wasn't done that day. This is going to cost me $1,000 just to come give you fingerprints and a picture. That It just seems like a lot, you know? And I've been informed that I could get my fingerprints and pictures done out here and have them sent over to you guys. But right, so you're, say, you're saying that that's not true. Well, I'm just saying I don't know how that would happen. I, I don't know of the authority for that. Who in California is practicing Kansas law and telling you that? Uh, no, this is, I'm, this is when I talked to the deputy after I got done talking to you. When they sent me over, I went into like a different Zoom call. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that, my, that the Kansas, the Butler County, Kansas deputy was telling you this? Yeah, he was, he said to like hold off on it. Like, like I, that's why I never scheduled it in the first place was because he, I, I told him I was living in California. So there was no way I could get to Kansas. So he didn't even bother to uh, like schedule it. Why don't we have a warrant out for him, Mr. Revere, since he uh, failed to report as I directed him? Uh, you're on. Don't we usually issue warrants when they don't go out and get pictures? And um, Your Honor, I am, don't have any uh, information on why there is a warrant issued. My notes suggest that a the court had previously ordered a 1,000 OR bond at next February hearing. Um, so am I, I'm sorry, Your Honor, am I looking at, am I supposed to be in jail? What are my charges? Am I supposed to serve jail time? Sir, let's just, 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 just patiently wait while Mr. Regeer and I talk about this, this first point, because you've thrown a lot of points out here and we'll work through them. But, uh, um, Your Honor, I am. I I do appear to have a, um, a jail admission form that that appears to be filed with the court back in February. Um, but I am not showing an affidavit from the jail, at least at this point, insofar as um, the defendant's failure to appear for booking and processing is concerned. Um, for that limited issue, of course, I'll defer to whatever orders the court may issue. All right, so your the jail admit form says he was supposed to check in what day? Um, it appears to be dated February 1st of 2023, uh, which would have been the hearing date. Um, mm -hmm. It doesn't appear to have any uh, specific reporting dates. It just indicates the bond type is OR um, with the next court date of today's date and time, bond amount of 1000 Well, that's why you don't have an affidavit from the jail is because they didn't have a date for him to report. So it sounds like something did go wrong when you were talking to the deputy at the Sally Court, because the deputy was supposed to give him a court date. 
or not a court date, but a day to report. But if he's sitting there telling the deputy, I'm not going out, I'm not going out, that's in violation of my order. So he is in contempt. Judge, what's the case number on this? I'm going to do a little research real quick. Okay, it's 2022-TR-3511. Thank you, Deputy Throckmorton. All right, so what are we going to do with you, Mr. Bartell? We covered a lot of territory here today. Uh, Mr. Regeer comes to you thinking you've got a plea agreement. Apparently, you don't have. You did ask February 1st to give you more time to get some documents and maybe apply for diversion. So did you yourself decide not to go for diversion or did you get denied diversion? Were you um, diversion? I, I don't think anybody spoke to me about diversion. The only thing that was spoken to me about was that, um, all of this is loaded into a national database and that I should be able to go get my fingerprints and pictures done at the um, the county that I reside in here. And then this is what a Wichita police officer who's a lieutenant told me that all of this gets loaded into a national database and it could get pulled and that there's no reason that I should be pulled back to the state of Kansas for any reason and exited out of treatment for any reason since so, I am seeking treatment for drug and alcohol. All right. What is the Wichita officer's name? Is he PD or Central County? Yeah, he's the Wichita Police Department. He's a lieutenant. His name's Jason Bartell. All right. I presume he's a relative of yours? Yes, that's my father. Well, I hope he's giving you good legal advice. Otherwise, he may be, uh, well, putting you in contempt of court, subjecting you to jail time and fines just on the contempt alone. Each, uh, he, he surely knows that each jurisdiction has its own uh, code numbers for entering and indicating where the offenses took place. But I'm not going to debate with a lieutenant from the Wichita PD who doesn't have any jurisdiction in Butler County. Okay, can you, uh, excuse me, Your Honor, can you only get an attorney? I would just like All to. Right, let's talk about the attorney. Now, when you were here before, you didn't want to apply for an attorney. Now I do. Now you say you're in treatment where? I'm in California. Now, how did you get to California? Your father lives in Sedgwick County. You were next door in Butler County when these offenses were committed. So how did you get to California? I was, um, I was already on my way to California when I got pulled over. I was on my way to seek treatment. I was going to the ICT airport to fly into Palm Springs. From there, I did 60 days in an inpatient care. I okay. transferred over hang to- Hang on, hang on. I, I'm not as fast as you are. I'm kind of slow here. So you were on your way to a California treatment facility for drug and alcohol abuse or what? Is that what you're telling me, sir? And now you quit talking to me? Can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Okay, so what, what treatment facility were you going to in Palm Springs? This would be California Behavioral Health. And how did you find that? Do you have some relatives that live out there? No, this is where my insurance sent me. Okay. So where do you, where do you work that you have that kind of insurance? I'm sorry. My, you, well, I, I'm still covered under my dad's insurance plan. Through Wichita PD? Yes. How old are you then? 21. Oh, okay. 
And that's where you are now, is in the California Behavioral Health? No, now I'm at, I'm at a, uh, another treatment facility that's in uh, Huntington Beach, California. It's called Beach View Recovery. That's where I'm at now. The other one didn't work out for you? Uh, no, I just graduated. Oh, okay. So you're in the second stage of this? Right. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Well, let's go back over why you, why you stepped into this court in the first place. You were stopped in Butler County, Kansas, October 26, 2022, by law enforcement, and they charged you with driving while your license was suspended. That is, under Kansas law, if you have no prior conviction for it, a class B non-person misdemeanor. That means that if convicted, you could serve up to six months in the county jail. That would be Butler County Jail. And there is a minimum must order. I must order if you're convicted five days minimum, but I can't go up to six months. If it's your first offense, I can give you probation even from those first five days. If it's your second or subsequent, you have to serve at least the five days. But it also can go up to a year if it's your second or subsequent. There is a fine range for a first offense, anywhere from $100 to $1,000. If it's not your first, it, then it could be up to $2,500. Now that's count one, driving while suspended. Do you have any questions about that charge? No. All right, we went over this before, I understand, but you told me you don't understand. So we're going back over. Count two, operating a motor vehicle with unlawful registration or expired tag. Apparently you didn't have a current tag on your car and Kansas law does require motorists to have registration and tag on their cars. If you don't, and they say you didn't on October 26, 2022, you're looking at what Kansas law calls an unclassified misdemeanor. And that has a fine of $50 up to $2,500. It also has a potential jail sentence of 30 days up to six months. Then do you have any questions about that? No, Your Honor. And then in count three, you're accused of operating your motor vehicle without any liability insurance. Kansas law does require motorists to have a certain amount of liability insurance. It's alleged that you did not have any proof of insurance when the officer, uh, Master Trooper Kale Collins, asked for it. And uh, if you did have insurance at the time but just couldn't find it, you could take it to the law enforcement officer within 10 days. You could take it to the clerk of the district court. You could even take it to the county attorney now. And if uh, if it were valid at the time, he would dismiss it. Uh, no, Your Honor, I actually do not even own the vehicle anymore. I sold my vehicle, actually. All right. Well, you're still responsible for having had insurance on it while you were operating it. And if you can't provide proof of insurance at the time you were operating it on October 26, 2022, again, if you have no prior convictions within three years, it would be a B misdemeanor. However, Mr. Regeer, as I'm reading that, he did have a prior conviction within the last three years for operating a vehicle without liability insurance. Is that your claim? That this uh, is an A misdemeanor? That is my understanding, Your Honor. It was okay. a, I'm showing an amended information that was filed with the court in November um, under count three, which deals with this. It includes a two-wit statement saying, quote, on the first day of September, 2022, in North Newton Municipal Court case, no, 220-0067. All right, so they're saying that within the last three years, you were convicted in Newton Municipal Court in Newton, Kansas, for driving while, driving without insurance. So that Correct. was- Correct, Your Honor. And that's why I have decided to sell the vehicle to prevent any further traffic violations on my end. 
to completely stay out of Kansas's hair and not be a problem for the state of Kansas anymore. Well, so that's well and good, but I'm just trying to help you understand what's going on here because again, you told me you didn't. So they're saying that you had that prior conviction prior to October 26 of 2022 when you were stopped in this case. If that turns out to be true, then that would make this a class A non-person misdemeanor. And that means that the, the court, if you were convicted, could impose a sentence up to 12 months instead of six. And it means your fine would be at least one, uh, instead of being a minimum 300, it would be at least 850, 800. At least $800 up to $2,500. Now that's what you're looking at in count three. Do you have any questions about count three? Uh, not yet. No. Very well. So you know what you're charged with and you know what the possible penalties are. Is that true? Right. So you know what's going on to that point. The next point you do have the right, as I've told you before, to plead not guilty and set this for trial, or, and this is an or, or you can plead guilty and proceed to sentencing, or you can plead no contest. It's formally called no loca tendere, Latin for no contest. You neither admit nor deny the charge. You, as they used to say and still do in some circumstances, you stand mute. That is, you say nothing one way or the other. If the state can provide a factual basis for its plea, then you would be found not guilty, or you would be found guilty, and we'd proceed to sentencing on the no contest plea. The fourth option we talked about the last time you were here was the diversion. I'm not a party to diversions. That would be between you and Mr. Regeer's office, the Butler County attorney. They, uh, by Kansas law, are allowed to offer and do offer a program where if you are uh, not convicted yet and you meet their guidelines, then you can pay your minimal fines and costs plus a diversion fee and do any additional requirements. If, if you need to get your license current, they'd require that. If you need to get your insurance current, they would require that. But at the end of the period that you agree upon with them, they would dismiss all charges and none of them would go on your record. Now, I asked you earlier if you decided not to uh, follow through with the diversion because you told me at the last hearing you were going to check into that. Now that I'm realizing that there's been an amended information alleging a prior insurance conviction, I suspect that was outside their guidelines and that they may have turned you down? Is that possibly what happened? Or did you just really not go through the diversion process at all? Uh, yeah, nobody spoke to me about diversion at all. Okay, I did. I talked to you about it on February 1st, and I explicitly told you if you wanted so, to do this diversion, you would call the Butler County Attorney's Diversion Coordinator, Kim Cool at 316-321-6999, and she would walk you through the process. So apparently you did not do that. No, I only got a hold of Mr. Regeer to talk uh, to him, because I thought that that was who I was supposed to talk to about like diversion and my whole case, really. Well, and, and that's totally acceptable. Uh, folks who represent themselves do sometimes want to call Mr. Regeer, and he's gracious enough to take those calls and and decide whether you're diversion eligible or not. Mr. Regeer, is he not diversion eligible because of that prior or some other reason? Uh, this defendant is not eligible for diversion, Your Honor. Um, as, uh, as the court has already indicated, um, the insurance charge is charged as a class A. Okay. So that's why he didn't pursue diversion with you any further is because you don't qualify because they don't give you two bites at the diversion apple if you've had the same charge before within three years, they don't give you another diversion. Okay, so, you're, I thought I thought maybe I had done something wrong because you made it sound like I just didn't care and that's, that's not the truth. All right, 
Well, that's what I was trying to find out. Did you do something? Uh, did you do nothing or did you just not qualify? And now I know that you didn't qualify. So it was perfectly acceptable if you wanted to ask Mr. Regeer what he would do in the way of a plea bargain. If, if you pled to something, what would he do? And it sounds like you two have discussed you, that. And not really. Well, you were the one that told me when we first started this hearing that you had reached an agreement that he was going to. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know what accepting those two charges means. Like nobody told me what my punishment was going to be. Okay, Mr. Regeer, the two of you didn't talk about what your recommendations would be. Your Honor, my notes indicate that um, I offered to dismiss the expired tag if the defendant will plead guilty to any other charges. Um, I believe the defendant had some other concerns regarding booking. Um, of course, in my role as assistant county attorney, I do not represent him in these proceedings. And I believe he had uh, a number of other concerns um, which um, to bring before your honor at this hearing. Okay. But as far as what you were going to recommend for sentencing on the count one and the count three, you didn't tell him what you'd recommend or do you have that in your notes? Um, I, do, I do not believe that was discussed. However, if the court will order it, I am prepared to make a recommendation. Okay, well, why don't you tell Mr. Bartell what you would recommend? If the, if the defendant will plead guilty to the uh, driving while suspended and the insurance, um, I am prepared to dismiss the expired tag or registration. Um, under these circumstances, the states would be recommending count one, um, $100 fine, 108 court costs. There's the statutory five days, 90 days underlying, uh, 12 months reporting probation. For count two, state would be recommending the minimum $800 fine. Um, eight months underlying, 12 months reporting probation, uh, $6 probation fee, of course, with the sentences to be served concurrent. So does that mean I'm looking at going to jail? I didn't quite understand. I'm sorry. Well, of course, what he rec what the two of you agree upon to recommend jointly uh, is still a subject to the court. The court does not have to follow plea agreements. Most often it does, as long as they're reasonable. But the, what he's saying his recommendations would be is for uh, a controlling term of, it looks like eight months, did you say, on the insurance? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so he, he would recommend 90 days on driving while suspended and eight months on the insurance concurrently. So that means if you had to serve those two sentences, You'd get credit each day for both sentences for an overall term of eight months. But he also said, instead of recommending you start out serving those, he would recommend a 12 month reporting probation where you would report once a month to a probation officer. And as long as you did what you were supposed to on probation, you would not have to serve the jail time. Okay. So that's what his recommendations are. Again, as as a judge, I'm not down by those. So that's that's the plea agreement that, that follows up what the two of you talked about. He's added for you today what his recommendations would be. But uh, you've indicated that you you want to talk to an attorney about that, and you're perfectly welcome and entitled and have every right to do that, and no one's trying to, that I'm aware of, talk you out of that. So you can hire an attorney. Are you able to hire an attorney? No, ma'am. I would need a court-appointed attorney. And are you wanting a court-appointed attorney at this time? Yes. All right. Let's talk about whether you're qualified. Now, these are not necessarily free attorneys, but they are based on your ability, if any, to pay for them. They do not require money up front like most retained or hired attorneys do. So if, if you were found guilty in the case as part of your court costs, you could be assessed a portion of your attorney fees. Again, percentage wise, proportionately based on your ability, if any, to pay. Yes. Court costs. And I have, a, I have a question, Your Honor. Yes. With this uh, reporting probation, how does that work since I live in California? 
Well, you can talk to the, you could talk to your probation officer if you had one, and he or she would arrange whether you did that by mail or by Zoom or whatever means. Or with today's technology, there are a lot of ways to do that. You're not looking at an alcohol or drug charge where they need to UA you, although they may, after they meet you and find out you have a history of that, they may, they may want to have UAs, but they can probably get those from your treatment facility. So again, I think the short answer is they could probably do that by mail and like we're doing today, Zoom and so forth. Okay, and that's what that's what I would be looking at if I accepted the charges today was 12 months of that reporting probation. Well, if I follow the uh, recommendations, that's what you would look, be looking at. Now, you said Your you Honor, were, sir. Yes, definitely. I did find the documents, and he was told to go to the Butler County Jail and schedule with Shelby to get fingerprinted on that day. Okay, so we made an exception for him to work with Shelby. Sounds like normally we we give them the date. Was that you, Deputy Jared, that made that arrangement with him? That that was, and whenever I schedule somebody for them to call Shelby, I always give them the number and address like like I usually do. So that information was given. That was me. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Okay. So you're applying for court appointed attorney, is that correct? Um, no, I'll I'll just I will plead no contest. Well, now Mr. Bartell again, is a Bartell or Bartell? It's a Bartell, ma'am. I thought so. All right, Mr. Bartell, you have just been all over the place with me today. You just keep changing your mind and I don't uh, know. Honestly, I'm just, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm scared because I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I don't have any way to get back to the state of Kansas. And I'm trying to avoid jail at all costs because somebody like me does not belong in go. jail. They will eat me up alive in there. So I just want to stay out of there. Somebody like me, what does that mean? I am not your jail person. They would, would abuse and beat the crap out of me every day. <laughs> okay, that, uh, I, I don't know that I would agree with that, but I don't know exactly what you're talking about. So, all right. I, I, don't I, don't know don't belong, I don't belong in a prison, especially El Dorado prison for traffic violations. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, El Dorado Prison is the state maximum security prison, but that's not where you would be serving your time if you had to serve it. You'd be serving it in the Butler County Detention Facility, commonly known as the jail, which is just down the road from the prison. El Dorado okay. has both the jail and the prison. So. But I can't, I, I need to be able to take a plea that I know you want to enter voluntarily without any kind of duress or pressure if I'm going to take a plea. And I have well, to know like, it that you like, know what you're doing. And I don't know how many times you've told me today, you don't know what you're doing. So I, I think it probably would be wise for you to talk to an attorney if you haven't already done so. Now you've talked to your father, the Lieutenant with the Wichita Police Department and I, you know, things in Wichita, it's a whole different world in Wichita than it is in Butler County. It's a lot uh, bigger, oh, more involved city than, than El Dorado and Butler County. But uh, I think maybe you ought to, if you're confused and as you said, scared, which is understandable, maybe you should talk to someone who can legitimately give you legal advice, such as an attorney. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, final answer. Yes. I'm going to make it your final answer. So, <laughs> sir, She's the best. how long has it been since you've been employed? Over six months, seven, eight months. All right. What kind of work did you do before you became unemployed? I was a plumber. A plumber? Yes. Not a journeyman or apprentice, but an actual plumber? Yes. Okay. So you probably made pretty good money as a plumber, I would assume? No. No? 
Did you work $15 for an hour? What's that? I said fifteen dollars an hour. What a doof. Fifteen an hour. So did you work for someone else's company then? Yes. Okay. And are you married or single? Single. Do you have any children that minor children that you legally support or other legal dependents? No. And all you end up each of which you could contempt for not this, this place that I see you in, is that one of the facilities? Yeah, this is one of the treatment facilities. Okay, you've got some good therapists there, good meetings. Oh, yeah, yeah, solid. There's there's really solid recovery out here. Okay, and I'll bet you're glad, your dad's glad to see that too. All right, so we, I think we've covered everything. Do we hear anything else that we need that? to address from of the course, state's Heineken. perspective? I don't think so, Your Honor. Of course, given that Attorney Patterson has been appointed by the court in this matter. Any further communication should be between court appointed counsel and my office. All right. So don't be calling Mr. Regeer on the phone. Have your attorney do that. Yes, ma'am. All right. Anything further from your perspective that we need to address, Mr. Bartell? No, Your Honor. Okay. We'll be in recess at this time. You may go, sir. Just don't forget that date of June 5th, 8 a.m. or don't forget to call Mr. Patterson. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. You may go, sir. That gets a slow clap. All right, we got 430 in the room and growing. I can't go anywhere. We got Kitch waiting in the wings. So we're gonna I'm gonna play one more for the noobs that are in here. I see a lot of fresh um, faces in the chat. Old school people from day one. Welcome new people. This is every night here. We have fun. We watch fresh clips. We do hard work. We love you in here. So I'm going to give you a Judge Wolf Wolf Pack from today as the bonus clip. Let's roll. Have a seat. Tell us your name. So this is a bond hearing for a shooting. I won't give you any details because you're going to hear everything. And we also actually hear from the defendant. Let's roll. Tracy Hughes. And Ms. Hughes, how are you related to Ricky Hughes? I'm his mother. Okay. Where do you reside? Uh, 1037 Center Point Road, Hendersonville, Tennessee. And, and how long have you lived in Middle Tennessee? In Hendersonville? In, well, in Middle Tennessee. Oh, Hendersonville or? All my life. Okay. And what about your son? Has he always lived in Middle Tennessee? Yes, sir. If he's released on bond, where is he, where is he going to go? He's going to stay with me in Hendersonville. All right. Now, he's got some medical issues. He's got a colostomy bag, and he's got some surgery that will be coming up. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be the one to lining up all his medical appointments? Yes, sir. Now, you and I have talked about his, his medical conditions. He's got two or three procedures he's going to have to go through, right? Yes. And I'll bring it up to the court later. But one of the things, and, and I've learned from experience, is that he cannot have an ankle monitor because they won't operate on him with that ankle monitor. You may not know that. But if the court orders house arrest, and not the ankle monitor. Are you willing to enforce that for the court? Yes, I said. Okay, that. you're his mother. You're gonna make him do what he's oh, supposed yes, to do. Oh yes, yes. Okay. Uh, who else lives at your residence? Just me. Okay. And you're gonna be able to take care of him and take him to the doctor and all that. Yes, my daughter. She helps. She's a CNA. She helps with his okay. wounds and stuff. Now I think I know the answer to this. His bond is two hundred thousand dollars. Can you make that bond? Can no. you make a $200,000 bond? No. Can you really make any bond? No, not really. What well, is your financial situation? I know but when you were well, here on February 1st. I got a job for press, record pressing. And, and if the court, well, let me ask you this. And you and I have talked about this. You're going to seek help from family members and friends to try to raise the money for a bond. Yeah, that's what I would have to do. Okay. Do you think it would be feasible to make a $25,000 bond? Do you think you could do that with help? No, I don't think so. 
you know, if that's if that's as low as we can get it, uh, what is your plan for your son? I'll just have to raise money, get the okay. money to try to get him out because he got to have his surgery. Okay, so. all right. So you would work towards doing that. Yes. Sir. Now he's had a little bit of trouble in the past, has he not? Been in trouble with the law before. Yeah. All right. If he steps out of line, again, you're going to kind of be the third party custodian. Are you willing to report to the authorities that, that if he does something, he shouldn't do? Sure. Okay. I believe that's all. Hold on, let me ask some questions for you. Pause. Hughes. Um, when your son incurred these charges, was he staying with you some? No, he was living here in Dixon. He wouldn't go back and forth between Hendersonville and here? No, no. He was here in Dixon for, for a while, about a year. But it, before he came down here, he was living with me. And where does he work? Well, he wouldn't. He don't work nowhere right now. He was working at the where they build bridges down here. I can't remember the name of the company, mm -hmm. but he was doing construction, building bridges with some company okay. down here. And who all lives in your house in Hendersonville? Just me. Just you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you have a full time job? Yes, ma'am. Where do you work? Nashville Record Pressing. Do you work? Um, is it on site or remote? Do you work from home? No, I. Okay, how are you going to be able to ensure that he would be on house arrest other than just your word? What do you mean by that? How are you going to make sure that he's not leaving the house if you're not there? How long are you gone during the day? Uh, eight hours. Okay, so what are you going to, what measures are you going to do to make sure that he <coughs> abides by this house arrest if it's put into place? I know he will, oh, he would do it. <laughs> and plus I got cameras in my house. Okay, so you think he's good at following rules? Yes, ma'am, he is. Are you aware that he had a prior domestic assault conviction and was not supposed to have a firearm the day he got these charges? No, ma'am, I didn't. Okay. Um, and are you aware that he also has an evading arrest from Metro Nashville? No. Okay. And do you have any weapons in your home? No, ma'am. Okay. And do you have anybody that comes to your home that has firearms that you know of? No, ma'am. Okay. Do you have cameras at your house or any way to track him? Yes, ma'am. I got cameras outside my house and inside my house. Okay, so you'd be able to access those while you were at work to check in on things? Yes, yeah, I was doing it first when he was getting well at the hospital. Okay, and what um, what surgery does he have coming up? He has a colostomy bag, mm -hmm. so they got to do a reversible. <laughs> and that's the surgery you got to have, but he got to have three, two or three procedures to prepare for the surgery because he... I guess they got to make sure everything's healed up on the inside before they uh, do the surgery. Are these actually scheduled or are they needing to be scheduled? Well, they said once he get out of jail that uh, I would have to call and set up appointments again mm -hmm. because, you know, they can't, he wasn't able to go to the doctor while he was here number twice. So um, they just told me whenever he get out to call and they have to get him in there uh, early appointment so he can get all this treatment and stuff done that needs to be done before he has surgery. Okay, and who told you that he couldn't have an ankle monitor on during the surgery? Who told me that? Mm -hmm. Well, nobody. I mean, so I you just haven't heard, heard that from anybody? No, I, I just. Think I did, General. <laughs> he just said it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't have any other questions. redirect, ma'am. Are you gonna make him stay at home? Yes, sir. That's what mothers do, don't they? Yes. You don't need a camera. You don't need anybody mm -hmm, watching. Because Ricky, he, he's, he's a minor. He minds. He minds his mother. He's, he's not like that. He'll do as I say, plus he don't want to be in, in jail or nothing. Well, he don't want to be in trouble with you and, either. Yeah, either. right. That's right. And he's got the only thing he's going to be trying to do is heal from his surgery and stuff. He's not going to have time to be going outside of the house doing nothing. Any problem? <clears throat> no? Nothing. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. You can have a seat in the courtroom if you'd like. Mm -hmm. Glad anybody call your next witness. Call oh, Ricky Hughes for the limited purpose of this <coughs> hearing. Yeah. 
Smith. He shot me Would you state your hand. name, please, sir? Ricky Hughes. And Mr. Hughes, you're obviously in custody. Yes, sir. Your bond's $200,000. you have any way to make that bond? No, sir. You've heard what we've been talking about. If you're released on bond, you're going to go stay with your mother. Yes, sir. Because there may be an issue about your ankle monitor, uh, because of surgery and things of that nature, the court will, if it lets you ask, going to put you under house arrest. And that means you can't leave. Do you yes, understand sir. that? Yes, sir. Have you, now you've been in trouble before in the past. Yes, sir. Have you ever had a failure to appear? No, sir. You've always come to court. Yes, sir. Are you going to go anywhere? No, sir. How far could you go anyway? Not far. All right, that's all. Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Hughes, you are aware that you're under conditions not to contact um, Tina Morgan, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And have you been writing her letters from jail? I wrote her one time, but that was after a uh, year of restraining order was up. Mr. Diaz? She only had me on it for a year. You you're under bond conditions on this case. I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No, no. Well, you're, they tell you what would happen if you were to make bail. So if you were to make bail, are you telling the court that you're not going to try and contact her again if you're already writing her? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And are you going to abide by the rules that you're not supposed to have firearms? Yes, ma'am. Okay, but you I just want to address something real quick to anyone who thinks that I'm nodding in the chat. I'm typing on my phone and I'm typing bringing up clips. I have my head down like this. If you think I if you think I'm nodding, I'll send you my phone number, I'll send you my address. You could come here and you could address me face to face because you got a lot of cojones to accuse me of that. That is sickening. Absolutely sickening. Get a life. Dude, the day that this happened, you weren't I, just, I think it's going a little bit beyond that's going into the facts. I believe that would be a, a question because of the fact that, that uh, it would involve testimony regarding what happened in the event. So we're not going to require the defendant to answer My point was that he's not able to follow rules, so I understand how he's doing that. And you have an evading arrest conviction from Mentor Air Skills, is that correct? And when was this? Uh, I think it was around 2006, a misdemeanor evading arrest. My mic is off. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That was on the domestic. The um, Mr. Diaz, you heard um, yeah. Ms. Seastrunk testify that. And you pled guilty to that. Isis, yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, she did go and live with you for, um, for, for nine gotcha. months. Uh, do, you, do you agree with that testimony? Yes. Um, which, uh, from. Um, you've got a DUI. Here? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Let's see what else do we have. Um, you got a simple possession plea. Is that from here? That's from 2018. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you've got a probation violation. And let's see, when was that from? That's 2014. There's your domestic. That must have been some cross from before, guys. I'm sorry. You, should, you shouldn't hear it now. You've got an aggravated assault and a vandalism Thank that were dismissed from Dixon. <clears throat> that happened in 2012. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. His last report that's number seven. We've got a domestic from 2012 that looks like there's no disposition on. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You've got some more possessions with intent to sell marijuana from Metro. Is that correct? It was dismissed too. Yeah, it was from before when I was recording before, guys. And your abating is from 2006. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Let's see here. You've got a burglary that was reduced to trespassing in Nashville from 2004. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And a vandalism from 2004 in Nashville, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. So you're not a stranger to the criminal justice system, are you, Mr. Hughes? I have made some bad decisions in my life, but I have changed. Since January 4th of 2022? It was a bad decision. 
So what are you going to do with your time if you're released? How are you going to assure this court that you're not going to come near any of the victims? I'm going to focus on getting myself healed right and spend time with my other kids that I do have. But you do have a child with Miss Morgan, don't you? Yes, ma'am. And you know that you are not allowed to contact her right now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. You may stand down. That's our proof. Vince is rested. The state wish to offer any proof. Yes, I'll call the Texas agent. Huh? <laughs> Vince, right up here, detective. Raise your right hand. Be placed under oath. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. The state wish to offer any proof. Yes, they wish to offer any proof. Are you Detective Kirk Davidson with the Dixon Police Department? Yes. And did you work a case involving Mr. Hughes here? Yes. Okay. And what day did you get involved in this case? Uh, January 4th, uh, 2022. I was called. I was the on call detective. It was the middle of the night. I got called. And it ended up going into the 5th of January. So Where were you dispatched to? I was dispatched initially to 103A Hill, uh, Hill Road in Dixon in the city. And I ended up getting information on the way that one of the victims was at the hospital and they were preparing him at the ER for lifelike. So okay. I went straight to the hospital. All right, one of the victims? One of the victims was so we had at the hospital. Two? Yes. Okay, tell me about that. Um, when I got to the hospital, it was uh, Mr. Um, Bowens Jr. He was uh, in the emergency room with yeah. gunshot wounds. Um, and then there was one other, which was Mr. Hughes. He was uh, still at the, um, the residence, 103A getting medical treatment there. They were preparing for him to be uh, taken out and taken to the hospital. Okay. So uh, it was a fast evolving thing of me getting called out to me getting to the location. So the defendant was also shot? Yes. Okay. And who else was shot? Um, Mr. Uh, Bowens had a graze on the back of his thigh. Okay. Um, it was a graze wound um, from around. A and who was at the hospital? Uh, Mr. The junior, the son. Okay. And was he a minor at this time? Yes. And what were his injuries? He had a uh, broken, I believe it was left arm. He was shot in the lower part of the arm, and he had um, one in the calf. I, I can't recall exactly which calf. I'd have to look back at my notes. But he was shot, I believe, three times. He had shot in the, in the buttocks and in a leg and in an arm. And did you respond? Did you speak to the defendant in the hospital? I didn't speak to Mr. Hughes until the 10th. At, okay. That was in Nashville at Skyline. All right, but you did interview him? I did interview him okay. in the And did he give you a statement? Yes. Okay. And... Did you observe the scene itself? Yes, I did. Okay, tell me about your observations of the scene. Um, there was, I collected several pieces of evidence. Um, you may go into the evidence now or? That's fine if you collected okay. physical evidence. Yes, physical evidence. There was a lot of shell casings out in the front yard, uh, bullet fragments. Uh, there was one shell casing in the back right off the deck. Uh, it was just one nine millimeter mm -hmm. uh, shell casing. We did recover um, one orange reddish orange handgun that was in the living room area um, and the magazine it was in the hallway uh, we did collect another uh, handgun at the hospital and mr bowen's the father's vehicle also okay and um it's the father is he a victim in this case as yes. well and how is he a victim in this case uh, he actually his the car he was in in the driveway actually had a shot a uh, bullet hole in the door that was going into the car was inconsistent with Mr. Hughes' statement at the hospital. What was Mr. Hughes' statement? That he was shot at from inside the car while he was up next to the car. And how many eyewitnesses do you have to this? Five. Five? Five. And did you, aside from the defendant, of course. Yes. Sorry. And were all five of their statements consistent with each other? Yes. Okay. And was the gun able to be identified as being possessed by Mr. Hughes? Yes. And the shell casing you found outside of the back deck, was that consistent with some of the facts that you gathered? Yes. As far as him firing? Being fired out of that. Okay. What all did you charge him with? He was charged with uh, aggravated assault, domestic assault. It was attempted murder, um, possession while under the influence, and uh, carrying a weapon. Okay. Did you charge him with reckless endangerment for the public? Yes, I did. Okay. Were shots fired out into the public? Yes. And in fact, wasn't it a citizen, uninvolved citizen who called in this call? Yes, it was a neighbor that uh, lives, resides on back behind that property. 
because it isn't a, um, I, I'd call it a subdivision, uh, backside of the sub subdivision that it had. And have you been able to maintain contact with the victims and witnesses yes. in this case? Okay. Like as of recently? Yes. Okay. Uh, Miss Morgan, I just recently last week spoke to her. Oh, yeah. And what did you speak to her about? I was talking about the letter, and she was able to give me a copy of the letter that Mr. Hughes had sent from the jail. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you, Judge. Detective, was there any evidence that Mr. Hughes <coughs> shot himself? Any no. evidence that he shot himself? Yes. No. So oh, somebody else was shooting? Yes, someone else somebody did shot shoot him. him. Someone else did shoot him, yes. Thank you. <coughs> Would you please explain that to us, Ms. Detective Davis. Okay, so the son, uh, Bowens Jr., um, he had texted his dad saying, and there's proof of this, that his, um, that Ricky was pulling a gun and had shot a gun. His dad, his father was asleep and didn't answer, so he had texted a couple of cousins. They ended up texting dad, and he drove across the city of Dixon to pick up his son. And as he pulls up in the driveway, Mr. Hughes comes outside. <coughs> brandishes a firearm and points it toward the father. And that's when the 15 year old stepped in and was shot. Dad ends up returning fire to protecting a third party by shooting Mr. Hughes. Okay. That's how Mr. Hughes was shot. Okay, was the son shot by Mr. Hughes? Yes. Okay. And the dad shot the defendant as well, trying to protect his son. Yes. Is that correct? And himself. Okay, All right. Nothing further. Thank you, sir, you must have no. No further witnesses, Your Honor. Rest of you. Vote, please. No, Your Honor. I'll give you an argument. Well, Judge, you, you recited the factors in a, the case a few minutes ago. Uh, obviously, I think I would submit $200,000 is excessive. And <clears throat> in this judicial district, there have been at least two first-degree murder cases that I personally represented the defendants on, one in Humphreys County and one in Stewart County, where the defendants facing automatic life sentences had their bonds reduced, were allowed to make the bonds, were placed under house arrest, and at least in the Stewart County case, stayed at home for several years while the cases were pending. So I the world is the judge who did that. Well, that would be your honor, <laughs> uh, and I would be the lawyer in that case. But what I'm what I'm uh, saying for is, for the record, that case was also one that had been pending with the with the defendant in jail for years. I think that's, prior to that's that crime correct. being reduced because of the, the delay that resulted in, I think we severed all of those. There were five defendants. They were severed, and they went through three trials or two trials prior to the, the last trial being Mr. Abdullah Powell. That's correct. The point being that as far as danger to the community, when you go through the factors, he, he's going to be with his mother, like Mr. Powell was with his grandmother. He's going to be under house arrest. Uh, he'll follow whatever the court orders uh, him to do. He's not a flight risk. He can't go anywhere. He has ties to the community, and I heard Your Honor make the comment that the community means Dixon County. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. I think that might have applied back in 1989 when the Sentencing Reform Act was made. Uh, we're, you know, a generation further. It's, in my view, it's the Middle District of Tennessee. I, I view it from the federal system. Hendersonville is uh, the community. He's going to be with his mother in Sumner County to get these medical procedures done he's never there's no evidence that he ever failed to appear in court he does have uh, a criminal history a couple of them domestic assaults it sounded like but most of them nonviolent. whether or not there's a likelihood of conviction maybe is there a likelihood of conviction for attempted murder i doubt it but that's for the court to to weigh uh, but this is a situation that, that Unfortunately, we face a lot is poor people stay in jail, people with money don't. 
His mother's hardworking. She's she's willing to help the court. She has no money. She's going to have to get support from other people to get her son out of jail. This case got continued at the state's request. I didn't object to it, but I did announce at the time that I would be seeking a bond reduction if they wanted to have the case moved. So it's been moved. I'm not sure when it's set now, probably at the end of the summer or something. Uh, but he's up there at the jail, a jail that I like a lot, that I even will eat their food. I like it so much up there. But they can't. Judge, they can't. You're not single, are you? I mean, if you were a single man, I can understand maybe that you would like to eat the jail food. But I, I'm not sure what that reflects upon your own. I just, I'm, just, I'm comfortable at the jail, put it that way. Uh, but he needs, he needs, they're doing their best to take care of him. He's having to use <coughs> masking tape and stuff like that to repair his own colostomy bag. He needs to get out. Let's get him fixed. Let's try the case and let 12 people decide what this shootout was about. And we'd ask the court to consider the lowest bond possible. Because she just doesn't have any money. Wolf does two things. He always goes like this. See, he just did it again. He does this. Well, he I'm still when he goes one of the people who considers like this Franklin and places, Brentwood and Green Hills all Nashville and Bellevue all in one, but I don't think I watch, consider Hendersonville part of that. So I'm going to say it's not part of our community. But that's just me. Um, Your Honor, I do think that this would be a successfully prosecuted case. We have five eyewitnesses, and with their, their statements, if this were to go to trial, are all consistent with each Thank other. You, Laura. They Thank are you, willing to participate in trial. Um, we asked for a reset due to more testing from the TBI. We didn't have some evidence back, and there's not much that the state can do about that. Um, but Mr. Flanagan's right. He did not object to it. Um, as far as the risk to the public is a concern for me, Your Honor, because he is charged with shooting out into the public. There is a reckless endangerment charge, and I think that that is a very serious uh, event, especially when done in anger. And that is apparent that he has some anger tendencies with his domestic charges now and his conviction before. His ability to follow rules. He is writing one of the victims from jail, and he knows he's not supposed to do that. He is in possession of a weapon as charged here. He's not been convicted of it. But he has a prior domestic. He's not supposed to have that. He had a weapon. That's one of his charges here. Um, I'm just not sure that he's going to do what he says he's going to do. And that, and that concerns me. We do have um, a victim here who is a minor, very terrified young man. Um, I would hate for him to know that this person is, is out there without some sort of at least ankle monitor. Now, we do have a good friend, an officer, uh, Officer of the court, Lennon Bramaris, who might be able to help with the GPS and who might be able to facilitate taking it on and off before surgery. I think that that's an option that we should look at if he is given a bond that he can make. Um, I'd like to have the houses of the victims, their workplaces, and the minor's school put on there as far as places where we would not want Mr. Hughes to go if he was not put on house arrest. Um, that's just an option that I would like the court to consider. We've also agreed to furlough him out to special needs if needed to, but I don't know if there are spaces available. So there are things that we have done to try and help him because I understand that he does need his colostomy bag off, but I also understand that um, he's got a criminal history. This case is looking good for prosecution. It will be a serious sentence if it's um, prosecuted fully. There, it's an A felony, and he has a flight risk. He has a prior evading arrest in Nashville, and he testified to that himself, Your Honor. Boy, he's a winner. Judge, she, she raises a good point, and I think we can probably resolve that, is the court can order the ankle monitor. I will find out what the schedule is for surgery, find out what procedures need for it to be removed, and make arrangements for it to be removed. I just know from past experience how doctors are when you come in there with something on your leg, they don't want it on. But I think we can get around that. So I think the court can order the ankle monitor, and I will advise the court and the state about when he's going to have appointments and when he would have surgery. So I think we can do that. Well, <clears throat> the factors that have uh, been referenced by me and 
prior hearing. I'll go through them, his length of residence in the community, whether we consider uh, Dixon County in and of itself to be the community or not. Not really the issue, it's more what, is, what does he have in connection to the area, we'll say that. Even the 23rd Judicial District, he really doesn't have Hendersonville, it's Hendersonville. And um, it's not so much that he has a great deal of connection by the length, a length of residence in the community. He may have been living here in Dixon County for some time, but he's not long-term resident, to whatever effect that has. He has no evidence of employment status before me, obviously, financial condition because of his, his uh, injury. Family ties and relationships, his mother has testified on his behalf and testified, as most mothers would, that she would make sure that he uh, would do what he's supposed to do. Now, if he were not sitting in a wheelchair, that might be a little different. Um, but if he gets this medical condition addressed where he is more mobile and so forth, she may have a hard time in controlling the grown man, even uh, making him obey her house rule. Um, but she does uh, state that she would vouch for him. I don't have any information about his reputation or, ca or character other than his prior uh, criminal record, which is the next factor, which is prior criminal record record of appearance at court proceeding. I don't have anything showing he's missed a court proceeding. The record of flight to avoid prosecution would be entailed in that uh, evading arrest charge, which is referenced. Um, <clears throat> so there is some evidence about that. And he has what appear to be to the uh, misdemeanor uh, convictions rather than felony convictions. Um, the nature of the offense and apparent probability of conviction, a likely sentence. <clears throat> he has a class A felony of attempted first degree murder. Uh, there are many lesser included offenses. I think the probability of conviction of something is great. If you guys heard a pigeon noise, <laughs> that was me. While I was recording, I was going absolutely out of my mind. There was a pigeon on the windowsill, and my dog was about to bark. And I had I couldn't get to the mic to shut it off. So I was making the pigeon noises to move the pigeon away from the window. It worked. <laughs> but then I picked up the pigeon noise. Because the state has, uh, I'm such an idiot. Detective Davidson has pr pretty much proven that there was a... Uh, shootout, so to speak, and that according to the state's proof that the uh, defendant is the one who initiated it, and as a result of that, he is likely to be convicted. And whether, as Mr. Flanagan points out, whether that's first degree, attempted first degree murder or something less, whatever. But with five eyewitnesses who are willing to testify according to the uh, testimony, they're all consistent. That seems a fairly probable uh, outcome that he would be convicted. So, and if he is convicted of a Class A felony, it's not a probatable offense. Uh, a Class A felony is exceeding the, the ability to, uh, to grant probation of, above a 10-year sentence, so that would not be something he'd even be considered for. <clears throat> His uh, prior criminal record and the likelihood because of that he would pose a risk of danger. As I say, his prior records are misdemeanors, but the domestic assault and this apparently being some sort of domestic assault or domestic situation causes the court some concern. <clears throat> the identity of a responsible member of the community would vouch for the defendant. His mother is the only one that's, that's done that. Um, any other factors indicating whether or not his ties to the community or bearing on his um, willful failure to appear. The problem that we've got is, is that this gentleman's in a wheelchair and has got a serious a medical pigeon. condition that it's difficult for Dixon County to, to, to address. Um, and he's going to have to have some surgery, which preferably the Dixon County should not have to pay for because it is his responsibility, in my opinion, to have that done. <clears throat> the uh, court is of the opinion that if he makes the bond, that I said he's going to have to have the ankle monitor that's for a GPS location device and I want it to be the one that requires that you be able to notify. I think Mr. Bellmeyers has two different levels. I want the, the most significant level. Who even cares about this bond hearing now after the pigeon? No one even cares. I understand <clears throat> that um, from Mr. Hughes' mother's position, 
no amount of bond can she make because of that situation. Well, I can't do that. I can't give him a OR bond and a house release and, and live with myself if something were to happen. So in my opinion, based upon these factors and the significant uh, probability that he's going to be convicted of something that's probably going to require him to serve time, it is my opinion that a bond of at least $50,000 would be required and that upon making that bond, he will be required to have an ankle monitor that will GPS, he is to have no contact with any of the victims, and that means absolutely no contact in written form, in the audio form, or any other form, with any of the victims in the case. I, I think that his physical condition, even though apparently from the proof, may be of his own fault that is, he's in this shape he's in, is nonetheless something that uh, has got to be taken into consideration as a factor of the court. So that is the judgment of the court. Yes, sir. Thank you. Phil's pigeon talk. Pigeon talk with Phil. <laughs> I'm losing my camera. I'm laughing so hard. Oh my god. You guys are the worst. You guys are the worst. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. All right, guys, you even got pigeon noises tonight. Look, I'm tearing. That was so funny. Oh, my God, I can't believe I, I brought up the pigeon noises. <laughs> I can't even do it now. Guys, it was unbelievable tonight. We're going to go head over to Kitsch. Guys, thank you for everything. The channel is growing huge. And uh, I just want to take a minute just to, just to say congratulations to... Uh, Law Talk with Mike for hitting his 100K, getting his plaque. I did see that. That's very cool. Hopefully, I'll get there one day. So, just want to say congrats to him. That's a very, very big accomplishment for him. See you guys later. You've been served.